All right, welcome to the AT&T Red River Showdown on Fox. The legendary Cotton Bowl, the house that dope built. We're ready for the Longhorns and the Sooners. This is the Red River Showdown. Hi, everybody. I'm Gus Johnson, along with my partner, Joel Klatt. And welcome to South Dallas. Both these teams coming off losses. Texas losing at home. They fumble on the one-yard line to TCU. Oklahoma losing in Ames to Iowa State after being up by 11. But one thing is for sure, in this game, you know they're going to play their best football. Yeah. And we've got two great quarterbacks ready to compete today. I can't wait to watch these guys play and in some sense bounce back. You know, And, and it's such a, a juxtaposition between the veteran and, and the youthfulness. Obviously, with Texas, you got to lean on your veteran quarterback, Sam Ellinger. This is going to be his 37th start in college football. 14 passing touchdowns on the season. That leads the nation. He's got to play great today. He stepped up in a leadership role this week, said, listen, the accountability is going to start with me, and this is going to get turned around, and so he's got to go out there and lay it on the line. On the other side, it's about Spencer Rattler making his mistakes go away. Late in the game, he's made a few little mistakes that have cost Oklahoma both of the last two losses they've had double digit leads in the second half and they've evaporated because of some of those mistakes if he can fix them which they're all fixable and become a more consistent player then watch out because as Lincoln Riley has said this this team is oh so close to being a great team all right now let's get it to VA announcer Jim Jennings for a message of unity the Big 12 Conference and its member institutions are committed to fostering a culture inclusivity and respect and stand united in the eradication of social injustice racism and discrimination contradict this core commitment we share and underscores the need for us all to come together please take a moment to reflect and commit to making our world a place where each of us is treated equally regardless of our differences Thank you. All right, time now to take a look at the weather as Lincoln Riley and his Sooners are all set to bounce back after losing their last two games. 73 degrees at kickoff time, a little humid for a series that dates back to 1900. Texas leads the series, but the Sooners have won eight of the last 11. The two teams have played every year here since 1929 and the last 92 games have been played in Dallas. Gus, this is one of the most special and unique environments and games in all of college football. The Red River Showdown where legends are made. Oklahoma won the toss and they elected to receive. So Texas will kick it away. Red River, folks. It's a rivalry, a showdown, and sometimes it can be a shootout. We'll see. Texas OU. And we're underway from South Dallas. Dicker sends it deep into the end zone for a touchdown. Time now to join the third member of our team on the sideline, the All-American girl, Jenny Tack. Well, guys, even though Spencer Rattler is an Arizona kid, he told me this week that he has tremendous respect for Red River. And ever since he decided to go to Oklahoma, he's had this game on his mind. We had a great conversation about what needs to be different for this team. He kept using the word finish. We need to finish plays, finish the fourth quarter. I'm well aware there are improvements to be made. And as for confidence, he says, when you're the quarterback at Oklahoma, everyone expects it from you. I have it. On first down, a bobbled snap. They get it out wide to Drake Stoops, and he's dropped immediately. Stoops doing a nice job catching that football as Josh Thompson brings him down. So let's take a look at the OU offense. Not the start that they wanted, obviously, but this offensive line, it comes in experience, but they have got to run the football better. Should be noted, Seth McGowan, a very talented freshman, is not available in this game. He was in the concussion protocol this week. Offense, number 56. Five-yard penalty. It's second down. And a veteran center, Creed Humphrey, one of the best centers and offensive linemen in America there with a little snap infraction. Could not get off to a worse start here. And there was a little 
bobble with the snap on that first play, Gus, as Rattler had the ball slip through his hands. So a little nerves here for the Sooners. This is a young team and an experienced team, and they need some success here early. A little frazzled to start this game. Rattler dumps it underneath, incomplete, intended for Pledger. And Oklahoma trying to find their rhythm early as we take a look at the Longhorn defense. Keandre Coburn played his best game last week. He played very well against TCU. And Joseph Osai, the linebacker number 46, he's going to be on the end of the line of scrimmage. He's got to be an elite player and pass rusher for them. In the back end, a veteran defensive back core. This team has 30 different players offensively and defensively that have had starting experience. Fast start. Offense, number 52, five-yard penalty. It's third down. It's Tyrese Robinson, the right guard. And Oklahoma is in reverse on their first series of the game, and this is not what we normally see. How many times, Gus, have we done an Oklahoma game? They go right down the field in the first possession here. They're going backwards. Third down and 25 at the 10. Can't force the ball over the middle here. It's Pledger on the ground, gets to the 20. And Pledger dropped at the 21-yard line by B.J. Foster. So that will force the Sooners to punt the ball away. Not a very good opening series for OU. But I thought a smart play call. You don't want a, a freshman quarterback making his first Red River start to force the ball on a third and long in the shadow of your own goal line. Hand off, know that a punt is not a bad play here early in the game and try to establish at least some field position. We'll see what Munchau is able to do. Deshaun Jamison is the deep man standing at the 35. Munchau inside of his own 10. Nice spiraling punt. Directly into the sun. Oh! A flag on the play as Jamison is clobbered before being able to receive the ball. Brendan Radley Hiles. Running into the receiver. Absolutely arrived early, and now they're going to have to discuss whether he went to the head or neck Protection area. Interference. Kicking team number 44. 15 yard penalty is enforced in the spot of the foul. First down, Texas. Clearly, as a returner, you're going to get that protection of being a defenseless player, and now. The Horns are going to have excellent field position as Sam Ellinger comes on the field. Gus, veteran presence. Sunday after that loss against TCU, it was Sam Ellinger who stood up in front of the team and said, our mistakes end now. His teammates need to take a hold of that leadership and move forward. Their first series a week ago against TCU was an utter disaster, very reminiscent of what we just saw for Oklahoma on their first series. We'll see if they can execute here and become detail-oriented early in the game and take advantage, Gus, of this great field position. First down and 10 at the 43-yard line for Ellinger. He was 17 of 36 for 236 yards, four touchdown passes, and a pick against TCU last week. Ingram in the backfield. Ellinger throws it out wide on first down, and he has his man, Jordan Whittington, the redshirt freshman from Kuro, Texas. And a look at the Texas offense. This offensive line got going late last week. They ran the ball so well. And on the outside, Jordan Whittington, he is a guy that they are going to target. He's back in the lineup. Texas fans, you've been hearing about him a lot. Well, he's finally healthy. We'll see what he can do. Second down and six at the 47. And they're running with Ingram over the right side. Picks up the first down, lost it. OU has it. And that's what OU wants. They want to force turnovers. Isaiah Thomas recovers it. Only the third forced turnover of the year for OU. Oh, my goodness. Ingram, on his last carry last week, he tried to reach over the goal line and fumbled as Texas looked like they were going to go ahead and maybe win that game. And here, the ball just slips out of his arm. Good hustle right there from Perrion Winfrey, the defensive tackle, and a turnover for OU. That's something that has eluded them for years. Only 11 turnovers of each of the last two seasons, and a big one here early. So OU with the ball after this. Big Noon Saturday is presented by AT&T Business, keeping your business connected now with 5G nationwide. 
And is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. So we have our first turnover of the game as Oklahoma will start from their own 40-yard line. Spencer Rattler and the Sooners looking for some success as he pulls it out, dumps the ball down, and this is Mickey Henderson. Henderson picking up positive yardage as he's stopped by B.J. Foster. Let's take a look at Built for Success is presented by Rocket Mortgage for the personalized playbook on home loans. Rocket can, and these two quarterbacks, you look at one of them, 37th start, 22 wins, over 11,000 yards of total offense, and Rattler just getting his feet wet in college football. But folks, number seven is very talented, great arm talent, and he loves to take shots down the field. 15-yard gain on the last play. Pledger breaks the tackle. Pledger with running room. Pledger bounces it outside down the sideline and goes down at the 20. Chris Brown stops him. Oklahoma, they want to run the ball better than they have to start this season. Not only want, Gus, they have to run the ball better than they have to start the season. And they've said they're close. They said that this veteran offensive line is right there on the precipice of opening up a bigger hole. Pledger, T.J. Pledger, who was supposed to be floor, fourth string coming into this season, is right there, and that was a huge run for them. And Pledger again. He'll run over the right side. T.J. Pledger gets Iowa State last week. 11 carries, 47 yards. Also had two catches for 24 yards. So what's going on with Oklahoma in fourth quarters? Well, I think it's the fact that they're not running the ball very well. You know, if you go back to the last three years, Gus, they're the Big 12's leading rushing team, averaging over 200 yards per game. And a big reason why they were able to close out wins. And they would get leads early and then run the football late. And lately, it's been all Rattler throwing the ball late. Rattler in trouble. Rattler chased out of the pocket and he'll get over the line of scrimmage and avoid a loss. Joseph Osai, who really played well last week for this Longhorns football team with the tackle that's Juwan Mitchell who's down number six and we'll take a break back after this time now for progressive game flow the legendary cotton bowl here in South Dallas the Red River showdown Texas and Oklahoma. Texas losing to TCU last week, 33-31 in Austin. OU falling to Iowa State, 37-30 in Ames. Third down six at the 15-yard line. T.J. Pledger doing a nice job running the football here in the first quarter. Juwan Mitchell has got to come out of the game here. He, he's, he stayed on the field for Texas, but they stopped the game because he was down. Juwan Mitchell was ejected from the game last week against TCU in the first Number half for targeting. Number eight for Texas was the player who was injured. He can sit out one play. He's not in the game at this moment. Here we go. So Mitchell will sit out one play. He's a junior from Newark, New Jersey. Came out of Butler Community College. He's a talented, talented player. They really missed him when he left, left the game a week ago, didn't they? Yep. Third down at six. At the 15 for Spencer Rattler, the redshirt freshman from Phoenix, Arizona. Here's Rattler looking underneath. And it's caught. Charleston Rambo, the redshirt junior, with the catch. And he may be their most prolific receiver this season. And a flag on the play. They are looking for that number one guy, aren't they? Yes. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 98, half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Let's look, this is going to be called on Moro Ojimo. Just that shove late, clearly late. Both of the flags came out. And OU take advantage of this turnover, Gus. They get the turnover that they desperately needed, and now they've moved the ball down first and goal. Texas had 12 penalties for 92 yards against TCU. T.J. Pledger in the backfield. Rattler guns it underneath it complete. That one thrown a tad low for Austin Stogner.
you know, I, it's, I can't help but notice, and, and OU struggled inside the five early last week against Iowa State and had to settle for a field goal, but Gus, we did enough Sooner games last year. This was Jalen Hurts territory, you know, and that big frame, his tough running, and they don't have that element this year with Spencer Rattler, so they're having to be more creative inside the five. Second down and goal at the full. Rattler, quarterback draw, can he get there? No, he can't. Nice tackling by this Texas team, and they did a much better job under Coach Ash last week against TCU. That time, Taekwon Graham got it. And he played very well a week ago, and they're going to need him to be big here this week. OU last week against Iowa State, they did a great job of getting play action, and then Rattler out on the edge to the right side, in particular from this left hash. We'll see if they roll him out to the edge and try to get Jeremiah Hall out in the flat. Third down goal of the two-yard line. Rambo in motion, sets up in the slot. Rattler looks that way, hits him, and incomplete. What a nice play by B.J. Foster. Texas, ready for that play. What a beautiful tackle on the outside by Foster. He wasn't fooled at all by the play fake. Rambo couldn't even get turned towards the goal line before Foster was there for the tackle on the Longhorns. Blew their neck. A nice goal line stand here early. So Gabe Burkich comes in to attempt the field goal. This one. Spotted at the nine yard line. They get it up. And good. So Oklahoma on the board first. They pay off the Texas turnover. And the Sooners take a three to nothing lead. Oklahoma and Texas have faced off 110 times dating back to 1900 with most of the games being played at the Cotton Bowl. During the Texas State Fair, the Longhorns lead the rivalry with 62 wins, but the Sooners have won 14 of the last 21. Regardless, these are two of college football's mightiest programs playing with a lot on the line, and so many incredible names have participated in this rivalry. Guys like Earl Campbell, Ricky Williams, Kyler Murray, Baker Mayfield. Just to name a couple. So the Sooners send it away. And this one takes a bounce, and it's a touchback. Pick the winners of the winners of six college football games on the Fox Bet Super 6 app, and you could win $25,000. It's super easy and free to play, so download the Fox Bet Super 6 app now. First down and 10 for Sam Ellinger. And the Longhorns at the 25-yard line. Once again, Keontae Ingram coughs it up. He did it last week. Cost his team a win. Did it in the first series this week. Let's see how he responds. Bijan Robinson, the freshman from Tucson in the game now for UT. Play for Ellinger on Team. Back to back turnovers. Trey Brown this time. But will it stand? There is a flag. And Oklahoma does not look happy there as they are listening in on the discussion of the officials. Prior to the pass, holding defense number six, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And that's on Trey Brown, the senior from Tulsa. Boy, what a great scouting report, knowing what Texas was wanting to do. And here's Trey Brown. He's going to be covering on the outside, and he's just trying to get that little tug that draws him even, and then he goes over the top to pick that ball off. A fortunate bounce. First down, Ellinger goes deep up the sideline, and it was great. Brennan Eagles, who scored a touchdown last week, had a step. It's interesting, Gus, because one of the things that Texas told us this week was that the one thing they were most confident in is that they could throw the football against this OU team. The secondary for OU is undersized, much maligned. They're very experienced, but everybody has been able to throw it well against them. And Texas has long, tall, athletic receivers and a veteran quarterback. They think that they can throw it around today. 
Second down and 10 of the 35. Ellinger with the handoff. Robinson breaks it inside and goes down. Close to the 40. That'll bring up third down. And medium. Longhorn fans are excited about Bijan Robinson, number five. This is a guy that comes in as the number one running back recruit in the country, and he was a little banged up after Tech, didn't get in the game last week, but here he is in a huge moment in Red River on a big third down. Longhorns need six yards. They need to get to the 45 for first down. Ellinger in the pocket. Ellinger floats one deep in double coverage. Well covered by the Sooners. Jaden Davis, along with Delarian Turner Yell, both covering Joshua Moore. Excellent coverage by Jaden Davis. And Joshua Moore is one of those guys with great athleticism and length. He's 6'1. Jaden Davis is only 5'10. And Ellinger is trying to put it up high, but it's just a little bit underthrown. And Davis does a great job turning back to the ball, playing the ball, and not allowing any separation. So Marvin Mims is the deep man. Ryan Buczewski will punt it away from the 25. Mims standing at his own 20. And he gets it off. Short kick, bounces backwards, and will be down at the 40-yard line. So great field position again for Oklahoma as the offense comes onto the field. Well, folks, fans voted, and Wendy's and Fox College Football. Listen, you're looking at the Wendy's Viewer's Choice Camp, which will be focused on Oklahoma's offense throughout today's game. Go to at CFB on Fox on Twitter to enjoy this alternative view for the rest of the Texas-Oklahoma football game. Let's see if they can capitalize on this great field position. Texas, again, does a great job in the red zone. They forced TCU to kick three field goals in the red zone possessions last week. Did a great job on that last possession. First down from the 40-yard line. The handoff, Marcus Major down the sideline. Striking. Oh, he didn't get clipped. Well, his ankle snatched. He could have run that one back. DeMarvion Overshone with the tackle. And sometimes necessity is the mother of all invention. And sometimes young guys just need a chance. And without... Seth McGowan, all of a sudden, Marcus Major is going to get a chance in this game, and you see some of that talent, great explosiveness, and like you said, just got caught on that toe and tripped up down the sideline. A gain of 21 yards. Oklahoma pounding Texas on the ground to start. Play fake. Rattler delivers and throws a strike. It's Marvin Mims gets upfield and a first down for the Sooners. Josh Thompson with the stop. And this is the rhythm that you need for a young quarterback. And as Coach pointed out in the pregame, a guy that, you know, he's not 6'4". Spencer Rattler is only 6'1". And now this is what you're starting to see, a little run game. Then you get a little run action pass, the ball easy throw on the outside. This is the rhythm that's going to allow Rattler to play his best football. So a first down for Oklahoma at the Texas 29, leading at 3-0. Rattler hands it off, Major, and this time he'll be tackled for a loss. Joseph Osai brings him down last week. Osai with 11 tackles against TCU, a career high. And he just comes straight in from that right side of the offense, does a great job. He's going to take on Hall. Hall whiffs, and he's there for the tackle. Rattler now on second and 11, steps up in the pocket, throws across his body. Wide open. Touchdown, Marvin Mims! Spencer Rattler. What a throw. Partner, I, said, I thought they said quarterback should never throw across their body. <laughs> when you got an arm like Spencer Rattler, you can do it. And he's moving more towards the line of scrimmage, Gus, which I think is the key. But he's going to move up towards the line of scrimmage. And then there's that space over the left. And just a blown coverage by Texas. And there's Mims wide open for an easy touchdown. Gabe Burkich comes in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. Oklahoma taking a 10 to nothing lead here in the first quarter. Marvin Mims, the talented freshman from Frisco, found his way open. 
10 zip. Texas with trouble. Big Dude Saturday is sponsored by Ram, built to serve, and by Wendy's new pretzel bacon pub cheese burger. <laughs> Marvin Mims with his fourth touchdown of the year is OU, goes 40 yards after the short Texas punt for Spencer Rattler. Yes, folks, he's a redshirt freshman, but that is his 11th touchdown pass of the year. Trailing only the guy on the other sideline. That's right, Sam Ellinger. I mean, these two He's guys. got 14. These two guys have lit it up so far this year. So let's see how Texas responds. They've dug a hole for themselves, an early one here at Red River. And this one in the end zone for a touchback. Let's go downstairs and check in with Jen. Well, some big expectations for freshman Marvin Mims. And since he is a freshman, I thought appropriate to ask his high school coach from Lone Star High School, Jeff Rayburn, just about his potential. And he said, one of my favorite stories is he came into my office as an eighth grader. I told Marvin, you have the potential to be the best receiver leaving this high school. But then he told me he was wrong. He was the best receiver in the state of Texas. Red River, so crucial and important, important for these guys. And he's looking to show it today. Mims last week, three catches, 33 yards. First down for UT at 25, and they'll dump it off. Jared Wiley back up tight end will get about seven and a half, maybe eight on the play. Boy, this is a big drive for Texas, just to calm their sideline and, and look at, for it to be a big Sam Ellinger drive, whether he's running it or getting on the outside and getting the ball down the field. Gain of eight, second down and two. Texas on the ground, and that play is stuffed. Leading the way, John Michael Terry for OU. Sam's going to be reading this defensive end over on the left side. I think you've got to pull this ball out and try to make a play with your legs. See how the defensive end screwed it all the way down? Made a great play on the ball, and now it's a third down. So third down and three for Texas. Empty backfield for Ellinger. Remember, he is a very good runner of the football. Ellinger over the middle, caught first down, Whittington and more as he is knocked out of bounds inside Oklahoma territory. This is what they want out of Whittington and look at it. he's going to come in and then he's going to loop back out. Really nice route. He's going to confuse the defense right there. Stops on a dime at the hash. Then he's outside for open grass. What's that route called? Joe? Is that a Dino route? I call it a little jerk route. And they'll go to the other side now, Whittington get back to the line of scrimmage. Other people call it a break route. You know, it's kind of break off a slant, get back to the outside. But that's the beauty about offensive football. You can call it whatever you want. O offense is just language, and everybody has the same type of concepts and same type of routes, but they all call them something a little bit different. My first personal favorite, though, was the jerk route. The jerk route. Give him the, little <laughs> jerk. Give him the shoulder jerk and then dip to the outside. The lip leg, second down and 11 at the 49. Lefe, Elliger, near side, caught. Joshua Moore with the running room and a pick up the first down. So it looks like offensively now, Texas starting to get a little groove going. Yep, and again, what is it? It's Ellinger, it's throwing the football. Get, get your leader, your senior, in his rhythm. Roshan Johnson checks in for the first time for Texas in the backfield, and they'll give it to Johnson, and Johnson will not get back to the line of scrimmage. I tell you, that interior line of Oklahoma is playing good. Josh Ellison with the tackle. Yeah, Ellison is a guy that transfers in from a junior college, Blinn Junior College. They've also got another junior college transfer, Perion Winfrey. And these guys, they're excited about. They just need to get them more experience in the program. B. John Robinson comes back in at tailback. Second down to 10 at the 35. Over the middle, deep, and incomplete. Intended for Joshua Moore, but covered by Woody Washington. Well, Woody Washington's not a normal starter, but they said they were going to rotate, try to get guys more chances in the back end, and he goes up and makes a play. Ten tackles last year against LSU in the college football playoffs, so he's accustomed to big stages, but makes a great play there. Third down, 10 at the 35. 
Gus, even for a field goal, they need two or three yards in order to get into field goal range if they're going to want to kick it. Alliger steps up. Alliger in trouble. Tries to spin. Let's it go and incomplete. Oklahoma brought pressure. And it pays off. Perry and Winfrey. Great twist. Watch as you're going to get pressure from this side, and then Winfrey's going to loop all the way around. And Gus, great effort by that interior defensive line, and then they ultimately get to Ellinger, and he's able to just kind of flip the ball up for that incomplete pass and save the field position so that his coach can have at least the decision here whether he wants to try a long field goal or go for it. I know that seems crazy or even try to punt it away, but I think that they're in Dicker's range. Well, Dicker's career long, 57 yards against Rice last season. Cameron Dicker, who made a name for himself in this game a couple of years ago. Well, they just took the delay a game, and then now they're going to go punt it. I, I knew, based on watching him in warm-up, Dicker didn't have the best warm-up I've ever seen him have, and, and I think that that might have weighed on the decision there for the Texas Longhorns. It would have been Gus about a 53-yarder, so right there at that edge of his range. Chevsky punts it from the 46, Mims back deep. End over end kick. Will it bounce back? Yes, it will, and die inside the five-yard line. Terrific job, Ryan Buchevsky. Greatest defensive play of football, Joel Clatt. The punt. <laughs> That's right. Pin them deep and rely on your defense, there folks. There you go. <laughs> All right. Good life advice. There you go. That's right. <laughs> Today's game is never be afraid to punt, partner. Today's game and rely on your defense. Oh. Today's game is featured on the free-to-play Fox Bet Super 6 app. One of the questions of the contest was, who will be leading at halftime? Just over half of the Super 6 players took OU. Oh, you're funny. I love it. <laughs> I have my own Ray Guy Award. Hey, how many times you won that award? Every year. <laughs> First down and Ted. I'll kick it in a heartbeat at the four. Oh, Ledger in the backfield. They give it to him. Stutter step. Crosses the line of scrimmage. And he'll give OU some room. B.J. Foster makes the tackle. I know. I, I don't know about you, partner. I feel like this is going to be a great game. I, I, I get that sense as well, and, and we've seen Texas come back, right? We, we saw it in that great comeback against Texas Tech. So I know that the deficit, it's not going to affect a veteran team like Texas like it would a young team like Oklahoma. So Oklahoma's got to be happy with the way this game has started here, but I don't, I don't sense the panic from Texas. On second and six, Ledger. He'll get outside, turns the corner, across the line. It's really bad. It is wrapped up and taken down Juwan Mitchell again. Boy, in the game. And Mitchell is, is struggling. He bent back over. Looks like he was favoring that right arm. So we'll have to pay attention to that one. He'll we'll try to fight through it. He's so important, in particular on downs like this, Gus, third and short. Sooners need two. Texas would love to get off the field right here. I would run it right at him. I would run it right at number six and test him. Rattler's going to throw it instead. Drops it off. And it's caught. Is it enough for a first down? Let's see. Austin Stockner making the grab. And looks like they'll spot it and give him a first down. That 6-6 frame came in handy. Stockner's in the slot right here. He's just going to run this out route. But again, look how quickly B.J. Foster closes on those out routes. We saw it down on the goal line. And did he reach over? Yeah, that's where it pays to be 6'6". Reaches over as that right knee goes down to the turf. And they'll probably take a look at this, but it looked like a very good spot by the officials. If he needed to get to the ruling 14, because it sure looked like that ball was at least that ruling's under review. right over the 14-yard line. Austin Stogner, five catches, 74 yards last week against Iowa State. He's caught a career-high five passes in each of the last two games. He is the only Big 12 tight end who leads his team in receiving yards this season. They've had some terrific tight ends at OU over the last few years under Lincoln Riley. Yeah, they absolutely have. They had Calcaterra, obviously. They had Mark Andrews.
All right, let's join our rules analyst in the studio, Mikey Rule Books, Mike Carrera. Mike, what do you think? Yeah, you know, to me, it's one of those where it is a tight spot, but, you know, he does stretch. And you look at that knee down, and it looks to me like it came right down. The ball came down right on the line to gain. So I, I think it's a very good spot, and I can't see them changing it. The head linesman on that side is Al Green, who is all over it. Pretty good singer this day, I heard. <laughs> Maybe a different Al Green. <laughs> but this one with a heck of a spot. Where the ball After reviewing is. the play, ruling on the field stands as called. It's first down. It should be noted at the start of a series, what they'll do, Gus, is they put the ball on at least a yard line. So they, they won't start a series with the ball like on a half yard line for a first down. So they'll move it to one of those yard lines, you know. And and what that gives them then is they know that if the ball at least touches that line to gain 10 yards away, they have a very good idea if it's going to move the chains or not. So first down to 10 of the 14, Pledger. And Pledger gets to the 20 gain of about six to Juan Mitchell once again with the tackle. This run game has been pretty good so far today, and they need it. Oklahoma so far today, already 78 yards on the ground, over seven and a half per. Second down and four from the 20. Rattler, here's a screen. Pledger with a block in front of him. And a hole. First down, sticks his foot hard in the ground and gets to the 45, upended by Chris Brown. But I like the versatility of the Sooners offense here in the first half. Yeah, they do a great job of releasing down the field and watch how Rattler keeps his eyes down the field and then he just invites that rush, dumps it over their head and then Pledger's gone down the rail. That's a beautiful little design and it's set up by the patience of the quarterback and then releasing that left tackle there, getting him down the field. That was a great job by Anton Harrison, number 53. Ledger missed the first four games of last year with a hand injury. First and 10 at the 33. And they'll hand it off this time, Marcus Major. And Oklahoma, during the offseason and prior to the beginning of this season, in terms of their running back room, they kind of got caught off guard. Didn't they ever, you know? First of all, they get a new coach. DeMarco Murray comes back to be the running back coach at OU, and then they lose Kennedy Brooks to an opt-out. Trey Sermon transfers to Ohio State, and Ramondre Stevenson is still suspended from a rules violation from last year, right before that semifinal game. So all of a sudden, they're down to their four-string guy. Second down and nine, Rattler. Incomplete, Rambo tried to make the OBJ catch Deshaun Jamison covering beautiful coverage there by Jamison Rambo's got some speed and they're looking for that deep threat that's the one thing that we really haven't seen from Oklahoma that we've seen in the past is that true number one threat on the outside and I'm sure all Sooner fans have been waiting and wondering whether Rambo is going to turn out to be that guy third down nine at the 34 golden opportunity for the Longhorns let's see if they bring pressure Rattler, empty backfield. Rattler, over the middle, picked up! OU gave it away! Overshow down the sideline, and out of bounds! Rattler never saw him. Watch Overshow, and he's gonna dip back from his defensive end positioning right there. He's walked up at the line of scrimmer scrimmage and Rattler never sees him. His eyes are right there. He thinks he's got an easy completion. Throws it right to Overshone and now Texas is in business inside the 15. A 29 yard return. The fifth interception of the season for Rattler. 10-0 OU. And welcome back to the AT&T Red River Showdown on Fox. Oklahoma turns it over now. And Texas sitting pretty. First and 10 at the 11-yard line for Sam Ellinger. And the Longhorn offense. Bijan Robinson in the backfield. And Ellinger runs it. Throws it out wide. And it's incomplete. Jared Wiley just couldn't come down with it. 
wild play there and not a great decision from a veteran quarterback the defense is flying around that is one thing that both Alex Grinch talked to us about and even Tom Herman talked to us about from the Texas side is this defense will fly around they've given up big plays but they pursue the football very well second and ten at the 11. Ellinger pulls it out looks Ellinger in trouble Ellinger sacked again Nick Benito the redshirt sophomore from Fort Lauderdale tracked him down. Absolutely brilliant coverage in the back end. Here's Jeremiah Cradell, number 22. They want to go to Whittington in the corner, but he's got good coverage. And then Ellinger, he can't get loose because he's got nowhere to go with the football. And that's when the rush ultimately gets to him. A loss of six, third down at 16 at the 17 yard line. Sam Ellinger, Ellinger runs it, Ellinger with daylight, Ellinger powers in, it looks like Sam got the first down, Deshaun White with the tackle, true grit there though, by senior Sam Ellinger. Now the flags are going to be on Texas, but it looked like it was more of a dead ball foul. Kerstetter, the senior, came barreling in the center and hit an OU player late while he was on Sam. So lots to discuss here for these officials. After the play, after the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Offense number 68. 15-yard penalty from the end of the play. The down will count. It's fourth down. So they said he was short of the line to gain. Here is he's trying to power in. Look at him. He's trying to go against all those OU defenders. Doesn't look like the ball reaches the line to gain. And then right here, there is the shove from Kerstetter. That is a huge mistake because they could go for it there on fourth and an inch with their quarterback. But as it is, they've got to settle for a field goal here from Dicker the kicker. So Cameron Dicker. Did not attempt a field goal last week against TCU on the season. It's three of four. 33-yard attempt here. And it's good. Texas on the board now. Here in the second quarter. 10-3. Oh, you. Don't forget, you can find all of Joel's Breaking the Huddle content, including his weekly top 10 rankings at FoxSports.com, the Fox Sports app, and CFB on Fox social platforms. Coach, Clat, I really like the way the defenses are playing I in this for, game. I looked for my dad. My dad, was, <laughs> my, my dad to me was Coach, Coach Clat. Clat. I agree, though. Both defenses now, think about it, they forced a field goal in a red zone chance. Both defenses have a turnover, so Alex Grinch and Chris Ash have got to be somewhat pleased with how their defenses have played, and these defenses have been criticized heavily during the course of this early season. How proud do you think Urban Meyer is when he sits down and he make, and he knows that these are his guys, I mean, major all, coaches yeah, all, all over the country. All, all of them. You, I mean, Chris Ash is over there, Tom Herman. Those were the two coordinators for his national championship team. Alex Grinch was an assistant for him. Uh, for a year at Ohio State. So that tree is flourishing all over the country. And certainly when you win as many games as Coach Meyer did, you know, you're going to have a lot of assistant games. You're around Coach Meyer a lot. I mean, it's been two years since he last coached. You think he still knows anything about I, football? I, I think he's more worried about how far his 52 degree wedge is. <laughs> <laughs> or his forehand down the line, you know? 10 to 3. 13.40 to play here in the second quarter at the Red River Showdown. Although, although knowing him, that what I just said probably made him mad, and now he's he was like, watch this! <laughs> <laughs> First down, OU. The young Spencer Rattler, low snap handled by Rattler. Scrambles out of the pocket, delivers, and Mims gets his lunch handed to him by Josh Thompson. Well, this is... Team comparison sponsored by Credible.com. 
and OU's rushing attack has really come alive here early. And it's been the penalties, though, and the turnovers, the mistakes so far for these teams that have really spoken volumes. Uh, big mistake on that last possession by Texas by Kerstetter. Uh, unforced error there with that penalty. And they'll run at this time with Major. No room for Marcus Major. When you look at both these defenses who have been, as you mentioned, Joel, criticized heavily. They look strong on both sides. This time it's Devondre Sweat, a.k.a. Big Lunch, with the tackle. Chris Ash did a great job of getting Joseph Osai loose in the pass rush on third down. Let's see how he is used here and see if they can creatively get him loose. He's going to be the defensive end on the bottom of the screen. On third down at five, Rattler thinking about it. Johnny on the spot. First down, Texas. Devondre Sweat was also in there on the contact number 93, and Rattler was just holding the ball a little too long. Good coverage in the back end. He didn't have anywhere to go with the football, and as he's going up in the pocket, watch it, still in one hand, and right there, boom, it gets knocked loose in Texas. Another huge turnover, and give their defense credit they have now two turnovers on back-to-back -back drives that give their offense short fields and OU's defense answered the bell in the last series we'll see if Texas now can take advantage of a short field given to them by their aggressive defense first down at 10 of the 19 for UT Roshan Johnson in the backfield with Sam Ellinger Give it to Johnson, trying to get downhill, and he won't. Josh Ellison plugging up the hole and making the tackle. You know, it's so interesting, and, and we've talked about it. You talked about it, Gus. These defenses have been criticized heavily, and in some cases, rightly so. But when you watch the film and talk with these coaches, what you do find out is it's usually one out of 10 plays, one out of 20 plays. They're playing really solid defense, both of these teams, and then all of a sudden a big play will happen, or a chunk yardage play will happen, or a penalty will happen, and so far they've avoided that. Loss of two, second and 12. Ellinger sprints out of the pocket, sets up, goes deep, and incomplete. Brewer, the intended receiver, but a flag on the play. Brendan Radley Hiles in coverage. The linebacker was also down there, Asamoah, deep down the field in coverage. Pass interference, defense. Number 44, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. It's been a rocky start to the season for Brendan Radley Heil. Yeah, he's just undersized, right? He's trying to cover Cade Brewer, who's 6'4 down the field. Boy, that I don't know about that. There have been certainly other calls on Radley Heil during the course of the year that were certainly pass interference. That one looked very touchy. First to goal of the six, quarterback run. So here we go, folks. Red River. Longhorns with a chance to level this game at 10 as Cameron Dicker comes on for the extra point. And right now, Alex Grinch is not getting any help from the OU offense with the turnovers. Ten up, 11.44 to play, second quarter, Big Sam. From the innovative WWE Thunderdome, for the first time ever on SmackDown, a Universal Championship match. Roman Reigns defends against the monster Braun Strowman. It's the season premiere of Friday Night SmackDown, live at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. Welcome back. 
Sam Ellinger with the touchdown, and we have a 10-10 ball game here at the Cotton Bowl. That's the play I thought they were going to use on first down last week against TCU, right? Run the Q power with your guy who is so dangerous inside the five-yard line. Ellinger now has nine rushing touchdowns against OU in his career. That's insane. Dicker sends it away and will not be returned. So Spencer Rattler, very interesting start to his career as the starting quarterback at Oklahoma. First time Lincoln Riley has had to groom a quarterback from the very beginning. That's right, Baker Mayfield. He had significant time starting in college football before getting to OU. Now we're going to get a QB change. So now Tanner Mordecai coming in, the redshirt sophomore from Waco, Texas, replacing Spencer Rattler. Mordecai is a guy they've been high on for a long time. Gave Jalen Hurts all he could handle last year in a QB competition. And on first down, he hands it off to Fletcher. So getting pulled in the first half after throwing two picks. They're working on him right now. Is it an injury in your opinion, or well, do you think maybe it was time for him to watch for a little Well, bit? listen. He got hit awkwardly, and his arm was down, and you get taken down the, down the ground, you never know. Mordecai to throw it, winds up, delivers, and it's caught. Nice ball as he hits Theo Weiss. So Tanner Mordecai, this season is 14-17, 157 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Tell me about Tanner. Well, this is a guy that's been in this program a long time. He's going to know the offense inside and out, and now it's his chance, his opportunity in the biggest stage he's ever played in. Luis again with the reception. Nice move after the catch as he picks up a first down. Gus Juan Mitchell with the stop. One thing I will tell you, as a quarterback, when you go in the game, you have to bring energy to that huddle, to that uh, those offensive players. They have to see confidence in your eye. You know where you're going with the football. Be decisive with your decisions in the passing game, and if you need to run, take off and run. First down at the 48. Mordecai out of the pocket, and he'll find his receiver, and this is Stockner. Stockner uh, tackled by B.J. Foster on the play. And then I would also, in those opportunities, when you get into the game, you give some guys some love. Hey, we got this. I know you can do it. I've got you. Don't worry. All those different things. And those are huge momentum lifts to your team, even if it's just an, an injury uh, with Rattler, and we'll see how he is. But Texas now has a player down. That's Josh Thompson, number nine, the corner. He had a red shirt last year after four games because of a foot injury from Nacogdoches, Texas. He's walking gingerly. This is, this is one of those moments. If you go into the Oklahoma huddle right now, Lincoln Riley is this, he's an experienced offensive mind. He's got a guy out there, you bet. I bet you have Mordecai's heart's pumping through his pads right now, right? Yeah. You calmly tell him, we're going to go attack whoever comes in the game for Josh Thompson. That's what I would do, right? We're, we would go attack because all of a sudden now, Texas is going to have to have another corner come on the field, and they're hurting at that position. Kenyatta Watson, who is the backup to Josh Thompson, put his name in the transfer portal this week. So they are thin at corner. And whoever comes in, you've got to at least take a shot at what they've got. And that's Jalen Green at the top of your screen. Second down and five. Texas, look at this. They're going to give Green help. Look at that. The safety is deep behind him. Mordecai handing it to Pledger. Pledger looking for space. Picks up the first. T.J. Pledger. Jim Buggy. The 20, but did he fumble it? Did he fumble it? And he did! Going on the field is a fumble. Recovered by the defense. First down in Texas. Texas recovers. Guess who it was down the field? Joseph Osai. We've been talking about him all game. Look at 46. Flying down the field and look at him punch right there and the ball certainly comes out. It's loose before Pledger hits the ground and Texas 
falls on it in the scrum. What a play from Joseph Osai. Terrific effort. 6'4", 253 pounds, lined up at defensive end, flying down the field on a big run and pops the ball loose. And that's the third straight drive that OU's offense has turned it over. Joseph Osai saw the game of football on TV for the first time at the age of 10 when he came to the United States from Nigeria. Now he's an NFL prospect. Big turnover there. Here's Ellinger. Sam Ellinger underneath, and it's picked up off the turf. Nice catch by Tariq Black, the Michigan transfer. As he's taken down by Joshua Eaton. But it's a 22-yard gain. Yeah, big crossing route, and the Oklahoma defense got confused, and then he was wide open. You know, they may I, take a look at it. I was just going to say, he caught that so low to the ground, Gus, it, it wouldn't shock me if if they wanted to take a closer ruling look. Ruling on the field was a catch inbound. So that ruling is under review. It doesn't have anything to do with inbounds here. It's going to have everything to do with whether that ground. Okay, that was a great look by our high end zone camera, and it looked to me Boy, this is this is going to be tough. Ruling on the field is a catch. Mike Pereira, your thoughts on this play? Ooh, I am like Joel here. This is one that's really close. You look, did he have control first? Did he use the ground to complete the catch? Did the ball get all the way to the ground? Um, not quite sure here as our shot just is a little off screen, but there's another shot. Well, that looks like it was on yeah. the ground to me. That, that, to me that now he's, you can see from that shot, that's the one that shows that he actually used the ground to complete the catch. Mike, do you think sometimes we're a little bit too precise on what a catch is and what a catch isn't? I've been thinking that for about uh, five years now. <laughs> um, again, this is one of those you got to look at control, though. Yeah. Do you feel that he had complete control before the ball touched the ground? It's in, what's interesting here, and... You know, your crew, our crew has given us great shots of the actual ball touching the ground and control. So they could look this again, look at it and say, hey, he had control when the ball touched the ground and it didn't, uh, he didn't lose possession after that. So it is a tricky one. This is that look right there. That's real speed. You can tell how difficult that call is in real time and you understand why the officials on the field let it go. I, boy. Here we go. Reviewing the play, ball hit the ground. It's an incomplete pass. Ball be returned to the previous spot. It's second down. Please put 10:09 on the game clock. Thank you very much, Mike. On the game clock, please. And, and as Mike was saying, you know, the ball can touch the ground. It's just that you have to establish control prior to it touching the ground, and you can't use the ground then uh, to help you establish that control. They felt like it did, and it's second down. Second down and 10 at the 18. Trips at the top of your screen for Texas. Sam Ellinger under pressure. Ellinger and he'll just tuck it on the ground. Major pressure applied by Isaiah Thomas, the redshirt junior from Tulsa. That's a really smart play for Ellinger as our referee Brandon Cruz is announcing in stadium. The OU fans want an intentional grounding because he's certainly not out of the pocket, right? But here's the thing, that was a setup screen pass, so he has a running back right there, and he does the perfect thing. He burns it at his feet. He just throws it right down at the running back's feet, Bajon Robinson, and that's a, a, a legal play from the quarterback. That's exactly what you're supposed to do, and he saves all, the, all that yardage. Third down and 10 at the 18-yard line. Texas needs to go to the 28 for first. Here's Sam Ellinger. Steps up in the pocket. Ellinger wants to run for the first down. Lowers his shoulder, and he'll get close. Remember, Sam Ellinger, 225 pounds. Nick Benito threw himself under the chariot for Oklahoma on that play. What a great tackle by Benito, right? Because he's he's racing over to the sideline to try to cut Sam off. And then Sam says, no, I'm just going right up at him. Radley Hiles is in there as well. He tries to throw him there. But it's the wrap-up of Benito that's able to bring him down short of the line to gain. Excellent tackle there in the open field. Both these defenses, folks. 
tackling extremely well, playing with energy and aggressiveness. And it should be noted, he did not use an opening of the helmet to grab him and pull him down. That's why that quote-unquote face mask wouldn't have been thrown right there. Legal tackle, excellent job by the officials. Luchevsky inside his own 15. It's blocked! It's loose! Get all you get it! Picked up and downed at the five! Whoa, what a play! Aguebu is the one that blocked it. David Aguebu and Buczewski was taking forever in that rugby-style punt over to the right side, and Aguebu just found himself at the right place, right time. Bang! Gets the block. There is a flag down late. Multiple flags here. A huge celebration from OU with a lot of players from their bench down in the After end the zone. After the play was over, our sportsmanlike conduct. Oklahoma, numbers 14, 40, and number three. It's each of those players first of the game. 15-yard penalty from the end of the play. It is first down, Oklahoma. David Aguebu, the sophomore from Katy, Texas. Look how long Buczewski took. I mean, Jaquist, number 57, obviously he's got to make that block, but Buczewski took forever. And Aguebu was right there and ends up blocking it. This is a really talented player, folks. 6'4", 250 pounds, and another mistake from Texas. That has been the story of the year. The special teams killed them against Texas Tech. They survived. Last week, it was just self-inflicted wound after self-inflicted wound. And there's another big one here, setting up a short field for Tanner Mordecai. Mordecai remains in the game as he comes in for Spencer Rattler, who was pulled at about the 11-minute mark of the second quarter. First and 10 of the 20. Mordecai running it. They'll just lunge forward. Graham with the tackle along with Chris Brown. And this defense held in the red zone once before. We'll see if they can do it again. Gate of three on the play, second and seven. Here's the reverse, Rambo. Texas waiting for it, Rambo bottled up. Jitterbugging, all right, he'll gain a couple. But it didn't fool anybody. Joseph Osai once again with the tackle. Great hustle from Osai. Terrific play from Overshone on the outside there. But now a huge third down. Osai, Mitchell, Overshone. The linebackers really selling out for Texas in this first half. Third down and five at the 15. Jeremiah Hall. Enters the game in the backfield, number 27. Mordecai sprints out, looks backside, delivers. Ooh, he put that one right in the hands of Marvin Mims. Dangerous backside throw, but Mims digs it out. Texas played great defense. They're trying to get a throwback there. Roll the quarterback out to the right, come all the way back to the left, but the defense had sniffed it out. That's why Mordecai had to throw it a little bit lower, but it was a little too low and behind Mims. How about that catch from the young player? Showing off his hands. Remember, went to high school only 30 miles away from the Cotton Bowl. He's been dreaming of this for a long time. But Oklahoma picks up a first down on the seven-yard gain. First and goal at the eight. Stoops in motion. They hand it off straight ahead, Pledger. Helmets flying. Pledger loses his hat. He'll pick it up. He'll have to step off for a play. B.J. Foster with the tackle. Man, Foster has been all over. I mean, he's, play, he's played a really solid game so far. Comes up from his safety spot. Excellent job by this offensive line. And then, bang, Foster comes up and hammers T.J. Pledger. He'll have to come out, which means it's going to be Marcus Major in the backfield here, Gus. Second down goal at the seven. Can Oklahoma pay it off here at Red River? 2020, Mordecai gives it off. Major, touchdown, Sooners! Seven-yard touchdown run for Marcus Major. The redshirt freshman from Millwood High School in Oklahoma City. Check out Chris Brown, the safety. He's just late getting over. Major finds the hole. Nice job up front. They pull both offensive linemen. They get the blocks. But that's where the safety has got to be, and he's just not far enough outside. 
We've seen B.J. Foster make a few tackles, but there it's Chris Brown out of position. Touchdown, Oklahoma. So Oklahoma reclaiming the lead. Burkitt in for the extra point. And it's good. 17 to 10. First, the block punt. Then, the power run. OU takes the lead, 17-10. Seventeen to ten. Oklahoma leading twenty-second ranked Texas after the block punt by Oguebu and the seven-yard touchdown run from Marcus Major. Major's first career touchdown. Paying off that block punt. Deshaun Jamison is the deep man. Let's have him go over his head and out of bounds. All right, let's go to Los Angeles and check in with Kevin Burkhart. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime, highlights from a top 20 matchup in the ACC between Virginia Tech and North Carolina. Kyle Trask in fourth-ranked Florida looking to give Texas A&M their second straight loss. And number 19, LSU hosting Missouri. Gus and Joel, back to you guys. All right, Burkle, thank you very much. I'm hearing some good things about former Texas head coach Mac Brown and what he's doing at North Carolina. Yeah, he's done a great job at North Carolina. And they squeaked by Boston College a week ago and got a nice win. First and 10 of the 25, they pitch it. Robinson cuts it back inside. And he's taken down by Brian Asamoah. Asamoah, seven tackles last week. Tying a career high against Iowa State. Gus, interesting here. A true freshman on the field for OU. Number one, Joshua Eaton on the field for one of the first times. He is a 6-2 corner. This is the future of OU. Not him specifically, but length in the back end. They've tried to recruit more length and speed, and now he's on the field. Second down and nine. Ellinger over the middle on the crossing route. Finds Jordan Whittington. And Jordan, first down, Texas. Deshaun White with the tackle. I don't have to tell Sooner fans that the secondary has struggled over the years. And the starting five for OU have 90 combined starts, and yet the production isn't there. And Joshua Eaton is a guy that chose Oklahoma over Georgia, LSU, Texas, even he was a four-star player. But that length is what they want. He's 6'2", much longer, and can defend on these tall receivers like Brennan Eagles. First down and 10, Ellinger. Sideline caught another first down for UT. This time it's Brennan Eagles. And you look at these Texas receivers. Jake Smith is six feet. Eagles is 6'4". Brewer is 6'4", Moore is 6'1", so there's some big guys. Alvante Woodard, 6'2". Allegher pulls it down and runs it. Slides down at the 45. Ooh, Gus, I love it when young players do something really well, right? Watch Bajan Robinson. He is the true freshman running back. Look at this blitz pickup. Bam! And gives Ellinger just enough time to get out of the pocket. That's showing your coaches some maturity, understanding of the offense, and the ability to stay on the field and passing downs. Keontae Ingram back in. Remember the last time he touched it, he fumbled. Play fake. Ellinger under pressure. Throws. And incomplete. Just didn't have enough on it. Eagles was open. Isaiah Thomas with pressure again on Sam Ellinger. That's a, that's a tough throw. He, he never got himself going back towards the line of scrimmage enough to throw that across his body to the left, deep down the field, because he had his man wide open. And here on third down, Oklahoma has done a nice job of getting pressure with the blitz. The only problem is you usually have to man up on the outside with those undersized defensive backs. Third down at six at the 47. Sam Ellinger on fake. Clock on the sideline to reflect. This one will stand for a big gain and a first down as Pat Fields brings him down. Check out the pump fake from Sam Ellinger. He's going to get the corner on the left side. I believe that's Jaden Davis to bite into that short wide receiver and then wide open down the sideline is Tariq Black. Ellinger now on first down throwing it in the end zone incomplete. No flag on the play. Joshua Moore. The intended receiver, Trey Brown, who wears the same number covering. We're going to get Brown. Pass interference. 
defense, number six, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Boy, this, this Texas team, this is exactly how they said it would play out. What are they most confident in? Their ability to throw the football and, in particular, throw it down the field. And when Ellinger has had the time to do it, uh, he's been successful so far today. Not a high percentage, but gotten a couple of penalties and moving them down here inside the 10. Gallagher, 8 of 16, 92 yards so far. First and goal from the 8. Whittington in motion. Ellinger looks his way, drops it off, and Whittington gets all the way down to the one-yard line. Ryan Mead with the stop. This is when I would go with that Q power. They just when I say Q power, that means quarterback power. Lead, lead with Ingram, lead with the tight end, let Ellinger run it in. And that's what he's gonna do. Can he get in? Yes, he can. Big sack. Seventeen, sixteen, with the extra point coming. Oh, you defended it well, but sometimes it's just about the desire of the player. And Ellinger is going to be one on one in the hole here with the defender for OU. And Brian Mead just can't bring him down. And Ellinger finds himself in the end zone with his tenth rushing touchdown in his career against the Oklahoma Sooners. Texas said they had their best practice of the year on Sunday. After after the loss to TCU. That's what Eller addressed the team. He got in his guys' faces and said, we have to show more discipline. It's not where we can flip on a switch and be ready. We gotta do it every day right now. 17 up, Texas looking good. Big News Saturday is sponsored by Allstate. Get better protected with Allstate. You've never been in better hands. And by Taco Bell. 17-17, OU. Texas, the Red River showdown. Well, what a game it's been so far. This has been fun to watch. Yeah, it has. I mean, we've seen it all. Turnovers, mistakes, big plays. I love this game. I, it is the most unique game in college football, and it's such a pleasure being able to cover it. Charleston Rambo, the deep man. Zicker give him an opportunity? I don't think so. That's a touchback. Tomorrow on Fox, catch Carson Wentz and the Eagles as they take on Big Ben, Juju, and the Steelers or other regional action. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Or watch it on the Fox Sports app. They found a little rhythm offensively, or at least they, they think so. So Tanner Mordecai is going to stay in the game. Remember, Rattler came out after a sack that looked like you were working on or looking at his right arm. But now Mordecai has his shot. Tyler Mordecai coming in for Rattler with about 11 minutes to go in the second quarter. Mordecai under pressure. And that one deflected at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. Keandre Colburn. Snacks is what they call him. Got his hand in the air. Let's go downstairs to Jenny. Well, as Joel just mentioned to Spencer Rattler that they had been looking at his arm. That was so brief, and that was a while ago. He has been on the sideline involved. He has his helmet in hand. Right now, I think this was a wake-up call from Lincoln Riley. Second down and 10 of the 25. I would agree with you, Jenny. Here's Mordecai. Wants to run it this time. And he'll get out of bounds at the 30. So you're the backup quarterback. You got beat out by Spencer Rattler. You come into the game. How much rust is on him? Does I mean, all the rust. <laughs> that's, that's just the thing. That's why you just got to go out there and embrace it, right? Be the spark plug. Be the energy. Try to be decisive as you possibly can, in particular in the passing game. Take off. But these are the moments when it matters most. You're, you're a quarterback in Red River. You've got to make third down completions and move the chains. Here's Mordecai. Looking over the middle. Oh, and down caught. Rambo caught that ball. I don't know how he did it off his backside. Josh Thompson deflected it. Really on the field is a catch for a first down. 
He could have had the tight end, but now we're going to see if this is actually a catch. Oh, it absolutely looks like a catch. Unbelievable. Gus, that never touches the ground, and then he secures it. At that point, plays over, then it gets knocked out of his hands. They'll look at this, but my goodness. That's unbelievable eye-hand coordination oh. by Charleston Rambo. I mean, wrong read by the quarterback, thrown behind him, probably could have been or should have been intercepted, and now look at this. He reaches back. I mean, that is sensational stuff right there. Ball is secured. He's down, plays over, so even when it gets knocked out right there, plays dead. Sometimes you got to pick up your teammate, and sometimes your best players just got to make a play. That's 100% right, and they've been searching for that number one go-to guy on the outside and everyone's been waiting for number 14 to be number one ruling on the field of a catch was confirmed it's first down wow wow Whew. i love seeing great plays man that's that's sensational stuff right there sometimes you got to bail your quarterback out there you go rambo did it rambo preseason all big 12. Second to C.D. Lamb in receptions a year ago with 43, had three 100-yard games and scored five touchdowns. First down to 10 of the 42. Major. A major chop down as he crosses the line of scrimmage by Jawan Mitchell. Uh, I've gotten late word from Texas that Caden Stearns Former five-star recruit, safety, junior, is not available. He had a toe injury coming in. He tried it in warm-ups, was unable to go, so they're going with B.J. Foster and Chris Brown as the safeties right now for Texas. Second and nine at the 43. Mordecai. Lost it. Picks it up and falls on it at the 29. Tanner dancing around, trying to make something happen. Ball security. This one, he just hits it off of his own knee as he's trying to get out of the pocket. Now we've seen both court quarterbacks for OU. First, it was Rattler. Now Mordecai, as soon as that ball goes into one hand, it's come loose and hit the turf. And now you're just in a third and forever. Only thing as a quarterback, you cannot force the ball over the middle here. Oklahoma needs to go to the Texas 48. Mordecai. On third and 21, guns it. Chihuahua Mitchell standing right there, but there's a flag on the play. It looks like this play was blown dead. Well, it, it was just kind of an obvious offside. Looks like Ojimo. Offside. Defense. Number 93. Five-yard penalty. It's third down. That's going to be sweat. Here he is, 93. Clearly in the neutral zone. Yeah, I thought it was 98. They called it on 93, but it was, I didn't think my, I thought my eyes were better than that. I thought it was 98. So that'll make it instead of third and 21, third and 16. They need to go to the Texas 48 for first down. Texas is going to call a timeout here. 146 to play in the second. Back to the Cotton Bowl right after this. Seventeen, seventeen. our score. Less than two minutes to play here in the first half. Don't forget, coming up, the State Farm Halftime Show. Kevin Burkhardt, Brady Quinn, Richard Bush, Matt Leinert, and Urban Meyer are standing by for the State Farm Halftime Show. Now Lincoln Riley's got a choice here. He can either force the ball down the field, try to get this first down, or he can run something safe that he knows he can either complete or run the football, force Texas to either take a timeout or run the clock down and not give Ellinger as much clock to work with here at the end of the half. Oklahoma with three timeouts left, Texas with two. T.J. Pledger in the backfield, Mordecai delivers. Incomplete, stoops, couldn't get up and bring that one down in front of Overshaw. Good coverage, not a lot of open players in that back end, and Mordecai had to kind of force that ball over the sideline, and that's best-case scenario for Texas and their defense. Did a great job there. 
after Mordecai dropped the ball on a previous play. And now Ellinger's going to have two timeouts and a lot of clock to work with. Deshaun Jamison at his own 20. Shaw sends it away. Jamison comes up to field it. Has it. Down the sideline. Breaks a tackle and gets out of bounds at the 45. So Texas will have decent field position to start this drive with a minute and 34 remaining. Now millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why Fox Sports and Good Sports are restoring play for kids in the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Help keep kids in the game by texting play to the number on your screen. First down and 10 of the 44 for Ellinger. Great opportunity here for Texas. Try to go in at half with the lead. Try to get points here inside of two minutes. Empty backfield. Ellinger. All day to throw the ball. Underneath, he has his man, and it's caught by Joshua Moore. We pick up about seven, maybe eight on the play and no need to really panic or rush too fast there's plenty of time they've got two timeouts he can use any part of the field that he wants second and two sam ellinger under pressure and they'll sack him coming around the corner john michael terry and texas will use another timeout a loss of eight Seventeen, seventeen. Texas and Oklahoma level here with a minute and six to go in the first half. Remember, OU got out to that ten nothing lead, but Texas came right back. Third down and nine. Sam Ellinger under pressure again. Ellinger dancing in the pocket. Gets it away to Moore. Moore breaks the tackle and picks up the first down. Great individual effort by both Ellinger and Josh Moore. Yeah, that was insane. He was basically sacked a couple of times. Moore should have been tackled short of the first down. He ends up moving the chains, and now Texas is in business. First down at the 45. Remember their kicker. Has a big leg. Ellinger. Patient. Looking. And incomplete. Whittington out of bounds as he receives that football with 43 seconds to go. And OU's going to have to rotate up front because those guys have been doing a great job getting pass rush, but they're getting winded. So they will sub up front to try to get a fresh pass rush in Ellinger's face. These defensive backs just not hold up with too much time back there. Remember, they're just too short, giving up way too much height. Second and 10 at the 46. And now a timeout First called by, timeout Oklahoma. by Oklahoma. 30 seconds. 30-second timeout. Back after this. Cameron Dicker getting loose on the Texas sideline. Career-long 57 yards. Again, that happened against Rice last year. Now the girl on second and ten at the 46. Over the middle. Ball caught by Keontae Ingram, and he holds on, dives out of bounds, stops the clock with 35 seconds to go. Woody Washington defensively for the Sooners. That was, that was a big play because that now gets him in range. So now you're in Cameron Dicker's range. So the only thing Ellinger cannot do here is take a sack. Texas with one timeout left. Third down and two at the 38. Ellinger drops it off over the middle for first down. This will call by Marcus Washington. Incomplete. Ruling on the field was an incomplete pass. It's fourth down. Oh, decision to make here. I, I thought it came out. Harry's going to try to complete that ball, and then as he's turning, the ball gets knocked loose, and 
they're going to have to at least look at this to see if he had control and was turning in a football move. Third and final charge timeout by Texas. 30-second timeout. Good tackle by Norwood there. Trey Norwood comes up. Wouldn't matter because obviously Marcus Washington hung on to the ball. So that incompletion now brings up a, a huge decision, I think, for Tom Herman. I, I don't know if going for it gives you much. They're out of timeouts. You go for it, you got to get on the ball right away with only 28 seconds. From right here, it's about 55 yards. Remember, they passed on a kick earlier that would have been about 53 yards, Gus. And, and as I told you in pregame, Dicker was, was not very accurate. So that might be playing a part of these decisions here, and Ellinger will stay on the field. Off fourth and two. No timeouts for Texas. Better have a guy for Ellinger. Quarterback draw with no linebackers. Oh, well, this is a huge flag against Texas. False start. Offense, number 75. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. The foul does not qualify for a 10-second runoff since the clock was not running. Oh, that flinch just there on the left side of that offensive line, Junior Angelau, and now they're going to have to punt the ball away. They were in range for Dicker. Chose to go for it, and another mistake. It's just, Gus, mistake after mistake after mistake with these Longhorns every week. Self-inflicted wounds. Kuchewski sends it away, and it will be down at the two-yard line with 20 seconds left. Boy, we've seen... Kerstetter had that penalty, remember, when Ellinger had created that fourth and short. Their junior Angelau knocks him out of scoring position. This Texas team, at times, just doesn't seem like it can get out of its own way. And... This is when all you're concerned about from a no-you standpoint is... Is there enough space to just take the snap and take a knee? <laughs> which which there is. So Mordecai's just got to drop down and head in for half. And speaking of that, we'll talk about it in the second half as OU takes the knee. So the first half here at Red River. Defense. Big plays. And a redshirt freshman quarterback benched. A lot to talk about with Kevin Burkhardt and the boys in Los Angeles. 17 up. Halftime score at Red River. to the AT&T Red River Showdown on Fox 17-17, our score at halftime. Here at the Red River, Longhorns and Sooners. Gus Johnson, Joel Clef, first of all, shout out to Eddie Van Hayden. Yes. Fast play at 65. No please. doubt. What, a, what an amazing song there. And kudos to our, our guys, our production crew, for putting that, that little music video together coming out of halftime. All right, I bet you... Uh, that masterful guitarist would have loved to have watched this first half yeah. of Texas and OU. It had a little of everything, didn't it? I mean, listen, there were some mistakes made. There was quality plays on both sides of the football for each of these teams, Oklahoma and Texas. Let's take a look at our second half connection brought to you by AT&T Business, keeping your business connected now with 5G nationwide. Here was the first touchdown of the game. Watch as Spencer Rattler finds Mims down the left side. Beautiful little ball there, and Oklahoma was rolling, but then that 
pass rush became a problem. Rattler fumbles the ball. Texas capitalizes with their veteran quarterback. He runs it in, and OU comes back. Great special teams play as Webu blocks the punt. Major finds himself in the end zone, and then it was Ellinger tying things up with a nice tough run inside the five-yard line, and we find ourselves tied at this point. And now you've got to think about that veteran presence. Number 11, Sam Ellinger here. Second half of his last chance against his arch rival. I got to expect that we're going to see the best out of Ellinger here in the next 30 minutes. So Texas to receive the football to start the second half as Gabe Burkich sends it away. Deshaun Jamison is the deep man. And this goes into the end zone for a touchback. Let's go downstairs to Jenny Taft. Well, what is the quarterback situation for Oklahoma? I asked Lincoln Riley about Spencer Rattler, about Tanner Mordecai. He was careful with his words, guys. He told me he just wanted to get Tanner involved in this one. He said it's not an injury for Spencer, and he is available. But how much and if we will see Spencer Rattler again is the question. Coach Herman was pleased with his experienced quarterback. He said he got more comfortable. for. But for us to have success, we need to establish the run offensively. All right, Jenny, thank you very much. First and 10 of the 25 for Texas. First charge timeout by Oklahoma, 30-second timeout. Oof. And what will undoubtedly be a tight ball game. Don't want to be burning timeouts like that. First snap of the second half. And it looked like it came from on the field. One of the players just didn't feel comfortable. Maybe it was Delarian Turner yell number 32. It looked like he kind of ran up to the official and called the timeout. Didn't like something about the alignment there. And Lincoln Riley is well aware, I'm sure, Gus, of the struggles that his team has had in the second half. This defense played well in the first half at times, certainly. They got some pressure on Ellinger. But over the course of the first few games, in particular in these two losses that they've had to Kansas State and then last week to Iowa State, their defense melted down in the second half, giving up those double-digit leads. First and 10 of the 25, and it's Bijan Robinson. Lunch forward, Nick Medito with the tackle. They were really good against the run. As Jenny talked about Tom Herman saying, we've got to establish a run, that's absolutely correct. They only ran the ball, Texas did, for under three yards per carry in that first half. That's something that they've got to get corrected here in the second half if they want to start leaning on this OU defense. Second down and nine at the 36. Robinson to the left side. And he slices forward, crawls to gain even more yardage and a flag on the play. That was a really odd looking Block at the end of that play. Here we go, block in the back. Offense, number 13, 10 yard penalty. It's second down. Gus, you know what a block in the back is? What is it? A mental error. Here's Eagles now. And again, this is a, a veteran player. I mean, Tom Herman knows it. He's just like, what is happening right now? He's going to pull his hair out. There's Eagles. Junior played a lot of football. That is a mental mistake. Second and 16. Sam Ellinger. And he's sacked by that OU defense again. Remember last year in this game, Ellinger was sacked six times. OU getting back there, Isaiah Thomas. He's just working around that left side. Check this out. He's just going to get the hands down right there. Boom. See how he slaps the hands down of that left tackle? That's Christian Jones. And Christian Jones is a guy that played mostly on special teams a year ago. Is the most inexperienced player up front from Texas. And Thomas does a great job knocking his hands away. Third sack of the day for Oklahoma. Loss of six. Third and 22. Sam Ellinger, looking, lines up, and incomplete. Closest man to the football, Malcolm Epps, and that'll bring up fourth down. Great coverage down the field, not a lot of places to go with the ball here. This is Trey Norwood working kind of that safety position, and he comes right over the top. 
does a great job of not making contact too early and then batting that ball away and the mental air costs Texas and they're going to have to punt it away and not only that Gus but it backs them up so now OU looks like they'll get some good field position for their first possession of the second half. Uchevsky about a yard and a half deep in his own end zone Marvin Mims around midfield will backpedal Mims will get a shot here from the 31 going to get outside yes he does gets a block still on the move Mims hits the sideline Mims cuts it back Mims with the stiff arm it goes down at the 29 Buchevsky the punter had to make the saving tackle flags on the play His flags came out late that scrum right there at the end boy OU did a great job Gus there was a several different occasions where I thought boy this is going to be close whether it's going to be a kind of block in the back territory and the Oklahoma punt return team put their hands straight up and did not make contact and that was an excellent job allowed that's, Mims that's to get great the coaching right there. It, it really is after the play was over unsportsmanlike conduct number on Texas number eight it's his first of the game 15 yard penalty in the first down Oklahoma let's take a look at, at that return and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about first it's right here, it's Jaden Davis, he gets a good block, and then that's zero, Woody Washington. See how he just kind of maybe throws a hip? There's another hands up in the air. So they're doing a nice job. That was Jamal Morris, number three, the red shirt freshman. That's what allowed Mims to get to the outside. And then here at the end, Buchevsky, I'll tell you what. Buchevsky called for the penalty. That's, that's not gonna endear yourself to your teammates. And now Rattler goes back in the game here in the second half. He was pulled in the second quarter with about 11 minutes to go. He'll drive this one off. All first down to Theo Howard. And if you're Lincoln Riley, you pull your star quarterback, even yeah. though he's young. You got to be careful with that, wouldn't you well, think? Well, yes, you, you have to. You have to know, and only Riley does. And Coach Meyer made a great point of Lincoln Riley being the quarterback coach. Nobody knows his quarterbacks better than Lincoln Riley. So you got to know if he's mentally able to handle it. But you also, what it does is it resets your quarterback. He goes from trying to make big plays to just, hey, go out there and run the offense how I call it and how I've taught it. Stoops in motion, second and seven at the 13. Rattler checks it down, he finds Pledger, cuts it up, Pledger, and he's ridden down at the one. Chris Brown with a tackle, well executed play by Oklahoma. And that's that little screen pass we've seen a couple of different times. They were getting stalled out in the run game in the second quarter, and now what do you see? Like those little play actions and those little misdirection screen type plays. They did get stopped here inside the five, in the first half and once last week against Iowa State. So we'll see what they've got up their sleeve here. First down and goal of the two. Pledger, the single setback with Spencer Rattler, the redshirt freshman. They'll give it to Pledger straight ahead, trying to power into the end zone. And he does. Touchdown, Oklahoma. DJ Pledger. One thing you got to know as a running back, you're going to have to be one of the guys to be your own blocker. It's called BYOB, down on the goal line. Be your own blocker. There's always going to be an unblocked defender, and you've got to be the difference, and their pleasure is, and it gets into the goal line. First rushing touchdown of the season for the junior, T.J. Pledger. And Oklahoma starts the second half on a good note, 23-17 now. Set up by that really nice return from Mims. Gabe Burkich for the extra point. And it's good. 24-17, OU strikes first in the second half. Back to South Dallas right after this. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by GEICO. Happy geico -ween. You can save even more by bundling home and car insurance. 24-17 Oklahoma as the Sooners pay off that big return with the touchdown by T.J. Pledger. 
81 yards rushing so far for TJ. But more importantly, maybe for Oklahoma, it looks like Spencer Rattler may have had a chance to calm down, settle down a bit. Yeah, and I guess time will tell, right? And the second half of each of the last two games is where I felt like he struggled at times. So we'll see if he's learned some of those lessons moving forward. Oklahoma has blown leads in back-to-back -back losses. You know, Gus, that punt return team for OU has done a heck of a job today, and that's our moments of protection brought to you by Allstate. Get better protected with Allstate. You've never been in better hands. Check out the guys, their hands up in the air. Speaking of those good hands, letting Mims get the sideline. Then it was that nifty little screen pass out to Pledger, set them up inside the five-yard line, and then number five pays it off for six as he finds himself in the burnt orange of the end zone. And Lincoln Riley's got to be thrilled with the way this second half has started out for his Sooners. Texas from their own 25 on first down. Sam Ellinger in trouble. And sacked once again. The fourth sack of the game for the OU defense. Aguebu this time. What a day this young man has had. He had a block ball. punt and now a sack. And his pressure and length and athleticism is just getting to Texas and this has to feel like a nightmare all over again for Sam Ellinger he was sacked nine times a year ago in this Red River game and now that pass rush seems to just win time and time again and the coverage Gus has been really good nowhere to go with the football in his first read second and 17 at the 18 yard line Ellinger and this time he hits Brennan Eagles nice gain here and he's stopped by Trey Brown. Big third down here, and they're going to bring on fresh pass rushers, and we've seen this multiple times. So you've got Perry on Winfrey on the field again. It looks like that's Isaiah Thomas, who had a sack in the last series. And the key has been taking away the number one in the progression, the fast throw from Ellinger. He's had to hold the ball in the pocket. Keontae Ingram in the backfield. Sam Ellinger with the play fake. Looking, dumps it off. Ingram gets his shoulder square, looking for the first down, but he will not get it. Pat Field with a tremendous open field tackle. What a beautiful job by Fields and the defense, because what do they do again? Gus, they took away the quick throw. Ellinger then has to check it down to his running back, and Fields is out in the open field and makes the sure tackle against Ingram a yard short of the first down. Excellent job by that OU defense. Texas will be forced to punt. Ruchevsky had one blocked in the first half from the 20. Got it on the field for an injured player. Injured Longhorn on the field. It's like Chris Brown, senior from Houston. Buczewski will punt it away from the 20. Marvin Mims, who returned it 37 yards the last time he touched it, is the deep man. This one driven. And Mims with the fair catch around the 10. Oklahoma with the football and the lead. Back to the Cotton Bowl and Red River right after this. Want more stats? Just ask Siri. Who leads college football in passing touchdowns? All right, 24 to 17, Oklahoma with the lead. Plus, you could just ask me, too. Okay, Sam just ask, Just ask Coach Clapp. And then who leads college football in passing touchdowns? Siri, who leads college football? Sam Elling. Sam Elling. So, Oklahoma. First down and 10, Rattler, who was pulled in the first half, back here to start the second half. DJ Pledger is the pistol back. And they'll give it to him. Pledger take it down by Juwan Mitchell. Gus, the pressure in this game is all on the Texas side. I, like, they, they know it. Tom Herman knows it. This roster is built to win this year. They've got 
you know, 53 players that were either four or five star recruits on their roster. Coming into the season, they had 30 players with starts, very experienced. Their quarterback has been through the fires. This is his 37th start. Rattler pulls it down, runs it. Wise decision, cuts it back and picks up a first down, or is at least close to one. Juwan Mitchell chopping him down. You just get the feeling when you talk about Texas in this game that it's, I don't want to say, Joel, it's a must win. Ooh, it's close, though. But it's so close, and if they lose this game, pink slips could be passed out on Monday. Let's see if he got close to that as he's reaching clearly down with that elbow just short of that line to gain. Excellent spot. Third down, Wildcat formation. Pledger looking for the first, and he has it. But to, to, to that point, you know, and, and part of this is also where OU is at because they're pretty clearly in a rebuild right now. And I know, listen, Lincoln Riley's never going to admit that, and their coaches aren't going to talk about that, and they think that they're close, and we're seeing signs of that here today. But they're breaking in a quarterback. They're, they're missing C.D. Lamb. They missed their top four rushers from a year ago. They're missing Kenneth Murray. You know, there's so much going on. They're pass rushers, guys like Ronnie Perkins and Jalen Redman. So they're in a rebuild. So you start asking your question, if Tex Texas can't beat this OU team, where are they going to win this game? Rattler running again. And he'll get to the 30. I mean, think about it. They lost C.D. Lamb to the Cowboys at number 17. Kenneth Murray to the Chargers at number 23. Jalen Hurts to the Eagles in the second round. Neville Gallimore to the Cowboys in the third. We're talking about pros. That's right. Parnell Motley is gone, you know. Uh, and, and then again, you've got Jalen Redmond's opt-out. You've got Ronnie Perkins' suspension. You've got Jaden Hazelwood is, is injured. And, and I know these are all excuses, and OU is going to try to battle through this. But from the Texas perspective, it's one of the reasons why there's so much pressure on them in this game today. Rattler oh. drops it off, first down. And this time it's Theo Weiss. You know, as he's wrapped up by Jamison. You know what I see right now? A quarterback just going out and executing the offense. A lot of times, really talented players can try to play above the X's and O's, above the offense, right? Make plays. I got to go out there and do something, make something happen. When in reality, a lot of times, all you got to do is be a game manager, operate the system as it's designed. And that's what I'm seeing from Rattler here after he was benched and now in the second half. Major. And yeah, he'll get to the line of scrimmage. I guess sometimes a coach has to get a player's attention. It's a great point. And, and, Sometimes, especially a young player. And they say sometimes, Hubie Brown, the great basketball coach for the New York Knicks, used to always say, in order to get a player's attention, I just have him come over and sit next to me. <laughs> that, and that does it. <laughs> That's right. Second down and 10 of the 36. Rattler. Weiss lays out and makes the grab. But just over the outstretched hands of B.J. Foster, who is diving in that passing lane, and it got through. And Weiss is able to corral that. Watches Foster here just diving in over his hand, and a beautiful catch from Weiss. Ooh. Although, ah, nope, that was definitely not a catch. And that's why they ruled incomplete on the field. Third and ten. Rattler. And this is a catch. Weiss again. He goes right back to him. And it's a first down for Oklahoma. How about that ball placement? Catch for a first down. That was a wonderful throw from Spencer Rattler. This is a tight window, big boy throw. You got to have it on a third down. Look at this. All the way out to the sideline. Beautiful job. Foot down. Looks like a first down for OU. See if he maintained control while that foot was down. Oh, I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, I don't know. First down at the 46. They snap it. Ledger, sideline. And we'll get close to midfield. Anthony Cook defensively for Texas. Uh, I thought that that play, they should have buzzed down prior because you know, he never really establishes control until at that point. 
and he was out of bounds. I thought that they, at a minimum, should have taken another look, not suggesting that they would have overturned it, but it certainly looked, from that angle, like he didn't establish control until he was fully out of bounds. Second and seven. Rattler rolling out of the pocket. And a throw it out of bounds. Juwan Mitchell with pressure. Good pressure from Mitchell and a really solid decision from Rattler. And now he's facing another one of these third down chances. This will be the 11th play of the drive that started at the Oklahoma 13. Gus, I tell you, the guy on third down that is generally open for OU when you watch their film is Stogner number 18. He's a mismatch for everybody. He's 6'6". Six, six. Third and seven. Rattler. And it's called for first down by Weiss. Theo Weiss. Catches and bunches right here. Boy, that one was in traffic as well. Beautiful throw from Rattler. And watch Weiss as he's working against the defense. And then it's going to be crowded as Overshone tries to come from the outside. And then he goes up the ladder. Strong hands there as Overshone is trying to rip that ball away from his hands. And then he secures it through going to the ground. First down at the 42. There's no replay stoppage. So first down and 10 at the 42-yard line for Oklahoma. They scored on their opening series to start this second half. Rattler was back in the starting lineup to begin the half. Marcus Major, Jeremiah Hall in the backfield with the redshirt freshman. We'll throw it quickly on the sideline. Weiss gobbled it up, and it's a catch in front of Brown. Right, Weiss is doing a nice job on this series. And again, we keep talking about who's, who's going to step up, be the guy. We've seen Rambo make a play for his quarterback. Now Weiss on this series has made a couple of nice catches. This, this part of the field, this down in distance. Gus, I always think to myself, a little bit of a shot here. Maybe play action pass, get the ball down the field. And they'll hand it off, Major. First down. Chris Brown with the tackle, he gets up flexing. But his team just gave up a first down. Here we go, this is their bread and butter. They're gonna pull both the guard and the tackle around. They call it their GT counter play. They get both of those blocks executed, and Major is not tackled until he's moved the chains. That run game was very effective for them in the first quarter. Texas did a great job stopping the run in the second quarter, and now OU using the short passing game to soften up that defensive front, and now getting back to the run game. First down at the Texas 31. Rattler running on his feet. Nice move, Rattler still moving. And it'll be taken down inside the 15-yard line by Jet Bush. But what a drive Oklahoma's putting together. Remember, this drive started at the 13-yard line of 4 OU, their own 13. Methodical. We've had a couple of great catches. Now the run game is getting going, and that was the element that we hadn't seen yet from OU's run game is the ability to eat up the clock in the second half of the last couple of weeks and Gus the quarterback element the threat of the quarterback running so Rattler providing a little with his legs on this series as well 15th play of the drive first down Ledger All right now that offensive line for Oklahoma moving people overshone with the tackle for Texas that's exactly what Lincoln Riley wants. And remember, this is normally an offense that loves to work quickly. Look how methodically they are moving around right now. Eating up the clock. Eating up the clock. Are we in the Big 12 or the Big 10 right now? Is this the Red River showdown or what? Shootout. It's not a 
shootout. Exactly. It doesn't feel like OU Texas right now. This feels like a Big Ten game. Eight-minute drive for OU. Rattler over the middle. Caught. Stogner goes down hard. Boy, he landed hard right on his back as Chris Brown came up and made the hit. Remember, Stockner is 6'6", so he goes up, leaves his feet, and then lands right on his back. You land like that. How many of us have had the wind knocked out of us, landing us on, on your back? That's exactly what happened there. Dawson Stockner, who had the wind knocked out of him on the last play, is back roaring on the Oklahoma sideline. Sooners, first down and goal at the one, 17th play of the drive. That started with nine minutes and 34 seconds left in the quarter. Here's the run by Pledger, and he punches it in, just like that. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Whew. How about a mindset drive for the Sooners there? On that lengthy series, 10 rushes for the Sooners for 46 yards, and Pleasure finds the crease. Easy touchdown as he hops in for six. TJ Pleasure, second rushing touchdown of the game, second of the season. Burkich, extra point is good. 31-17. OU. Here comes Big Sam. Right after this. No matter where you're watching from this season, we're celebrating fans everywhere. Celebrating Fansville, sponsored by Dr. Pepper. The official drink of Fansville, and we are at the legendary Cotton Bowl. They call this the house that Doak Walker built. Due to his immense crowds that SMU running back Doak Walker drew here in the late 1940s. And this one sent into the end zone for a touchback by Burkich. Today's game is featured on the free-to-play Fox Sports Super 6 app. One of the questions in the contest was, who will win? And 57% took Oklahoma. OU was favored today by Fox Bet. And they have played like it, in particular in this third quarter. I tell you, this is exactly what you would want if you're Lincoln Riley. Get your defense. This defense has been flying around, so what do you need to get them, Gus? Rest. Right, big long drive, guess what? Those big guys up front, they can get back after it. We'll see if they can get to the quarterback on this series. Gallagher on first down, wants to run it. And he has a little bit of room, stood up by Brian Asamoah. Remember, this game was tied at 17 at halftime. It's been all OU in this quarter, all OU. Especially on that last series, man. That was an impressive series by that offensive line. We'll see if Texas can answer. Epic drive for Oklahoma. Ellinger, sideline, nice catch as Joshua Moore goes up high and brings it down. That last drive for Oklahoma, 17 plays, 87 yards, and the Sooners ran off eight minutes and seven seconds. Yeah, I think that may be the most important part of that drive, and in particular for downs like this. Fresh defense on the third down, trying to fly around. Third and one. Will Elliger run it this time? Ellinger, deep ball, on third and one, and incomplete. That one just way over the head of Bijan Robinson. Boy, that is that is not what you want if you're Texas on a third down, trying to throw a go ball to a tailback who's a true freshman. And now they're going to punt it away, and the Longhorn faithful here at the Cotton Bowl going to let Tom no Herman know how they feel. If I'm OU, this is the team that's really struggled for Texas. I'll come after this punt right now. Try to get in Buchevsky's face. Marvin Mims is deep at the 25. No rush. Mims signaling for the fair catch, and he has it. 
Now tomorrow on Fox, catch Carson Wentz and the Eagles as they take on Big Ben, Juju, and the Steelers or other regional action. Check your local listings for the game in your area or watch it on the Fox Sports app. Well, Gus, Sooner fans everywhere, what have they been wondering about for years, right, since we've been covering these games? Are, are they going to play better defense? And they've done so today. And the second half is when they've come out and really struggled defensively. And this unit for Alex Grinch, helped out by a long drive by their offense, played terrific in this third quarter. Oklahoma came into this game ranked 14th in total defense, ninth in rushing defense. First down for OU, Rattler. Dumps it down. Hall. And Hall picks up the first down as he goes out of bounds at the 40. David Benda knocks him out of play. And that'll take us to the end of the third quarter with the score. 31-17 OU with the lead and the ball. Back to the Cotton Bowl in a moment. Welcome back to the AT&T Red River Showdown on Fox. Gus Johnson, Joel Klatt, Jenny Tapp with you. Let's start the fourth quarter as we take a look at the first three. 14 points for OU in the third. First down and 10 from the 41 for Spencer Rattler. Rattler out wide, and he has Weiss, but Weiss Goes down immediately. Great defense. Jalen Green, Jr. from Houston with the tackle. Great closing speed there from Jalen Green and got right around the block of Drake Stoops, who just couldn't get to him in time. And now you got a longer yardage situation. It's exactly what Texas needs to try to get that pass rush and get to Rattler and rattle him a bit like they did in the first half. Second down at 14. Here's Spencer Rattler under pressure. And he has Weiss spinning, and Weiss is decked by Joseph Asai, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. A great chance to get off the field here if you're Texas, in particular with how poorly that third quarter went. And now it's incumbent on this defense to make a stop. I want to give this man another chance, Sam Ellinger. Third and 15 from the 36 for OU. I love running those stunts, in particular with Osai. Watch him spinning around, coming up that A gap. What I mean by that is they spin him around on a stunt and try to send him up the middle of the offensive line. Rattler. And incomplete. Threw that one at the feet of Weiss, and Oklahoma will punt it. Jalen Green defensively for Texas. A good stop there from the Texas defense. They needed that. They needed it badly. And now this offense has got to find a gear for Texas. Remember, they struggled so mightily, Gus, in that third quarter against Texas Tech. And, and Tech came back and then ended up taking a big lead on them before they came back and ultimately won the game. One shot. Getting a lot of work today. Jamison allows it to take a bounce, and it's downed inside the 30. Fourth quarter action, 31-17, Texas with the ball when we return. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by Rocket Mortgage for the personalized playbook on home loans, Rocket Can. Welcome back to the Cotton Bowl. Oklahoma with the lead over Texas as Sam Ellinger and the Longhorns come back onto the field and will start first down from their own 29. Ellinger to throw it on first down. Rips one off and it's caught by Joshua Moore. He turns it up and leans forward, picks up seven, maybe eight. Woody Washington with the tackle. The thing about this game, which is very interesting, as the Sooners lead here in the fourth quarter, they have blown leads. They were up by 21 and lost to Kansas State, up last week by 11, and ended up losing to Iowa State on the road, four again. Well, if you're gonna 
give that cushion just take it all day long if you're Sam Ellinger over there. And by cushion, I mean, Woody Washington is playing off against Joshua Moore. Now they're going to change it up. He'll come up and he'll play bump coverage. And the handoff, Ingram just met as soon as he receives the football. But this offensive line has just been outplayed, haven't they? They've been, they haven't been able to protect the quarterback. They haven't been able to run the football. They're right now run the ball for 27 yards on the day. That's just not going to cut it. Texas has just 174 yards through three quarters. Last year, Oklahoma held Texas to its low, lowest in total offense at 310 yards. Sam Ellinger. Incomplete. Tariq Black had a step on his man. Trey Norwood, but Ellinger throws it a little too long. Just a little bit out of his reach, and he had him there down the seam. I mean, he's open. Senior quarterback has got to hit him right there. That is, that is an open man. It's a first down, and now it presents a longer yardage situation. And Gus, what has OU done all day? Gotten pressure on Ellinger in these situations. Third and 12. Ellinger under pressure. Ellinger buying time. And Ellinger just drilled, lost it. Ball goes out of bounds. Brendan Radley Hiles or make that Delarian Turner yell with the tackle. What a tackle. Someone's got to help Sam Ellinger here. When you break contain of the pocket, your wide receivers have got to go do something. Look at these Texas wide receivers. They're just standing there. Like, Ellinger's trying to throw the football down the field. It's third down, and they're not trying to get open or work open. Scramble rules have to apply. What scramble rules are, if he's scrambling towards you as, as a wide receiver, you've got to spin and run right down the sideline. If you're in the middle of the field, you've got to break your away and run with your quarterback laterally across the field, and neither of them did that. So Texas flatlining here in the second half. Wachewski. It's a rocket and it just dies and is down. Wow, what a punt. Buczewski hitting OUD. back OU pinned by a 60-yard punt by Ryan Buczewski so Spencer Rattler and the Sooners start from their own two TJ Pledger lines up in the backfield with Rattler Pledger running it on first down and a very nice run it is We'll give Oklahoma some running room. Boy. Breathing room, rather. Yeah, and, and that often, you know, before this series, Gus, I'm just thinking to myself, 14-point lead, a little over 11 minutes to go. The game is not really in Spencer Rattler's hands. It's not really in the wide receiver's hands. It's in the five guys up front, right? If they can continue to win the line of scrimmage, OU's going to go on to, to win this game. Second and two after the eight-yard game. Ledger hit in the backfield. And somehow manages to get not only back to the line of scrimmage, but across the line of scrimmage and close to a first down. Yeah, what a run there, right? Great second effort. And you get the sense that he's got his shot today. Remember, Seth McGowan is out very talented freshman that was splitting carries with pledger but pledger now he's found a rhythm behind that offensive line in oklahoma now averaging four and a half per carry 34 carries for 153 yards while texas has done virtually nothing on the ground today first down at 10 of the 13. here's a handoff to pledger and pledger breaks it first down as he crosses the 30. Chris Adamora with the tackle. Man, he's been good pleasure. 
gotten his shot and he has paid off in a big way. They've been looking for the chunk runs to help out their play action, their RPO game, and whether it's been the little screen passes, swing passes out of the backfield, or just hammering away inside the tackles and inside the five yard line, TJ Pledger has been very good. 18 carries, 122 yards, just under seven a carry and two touchdowns. Think about him, Joel, he looks fast and fluid. And Rattler on the quarterback keeper. Rattler with the first down as he goes out of bounds. So how about this, folks? Oklahoma has figured out how to do it today on the ground. Great decision by Rattler. Gus, watch right here. The corner's going to come flying in, but he's a bit out of control. That's Jalen Green. Rattler sees him out of control, pulls that ball out, and gets around the edge for an easy first down. That's a beautiful decision from a young quarterback. And you know what he's done differently in the second half? He's just run the offense. He's just taken what the defense gives him. But that's boring, isn't it, Coach Glatt? No, it's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> All right, major. Now this offensive line getting a major push. They're starting to manhandle Texas now. Yeah, they're, they're not even thinking about throwing the football. This Texas defense has been on the field a long time, to their credit. Chris Ash doesn't have any answers right now. He's trying to motivate his guys, but boy, that is a tough feeling for a defensive coordinator when you're just losing the battle up front. And, and listen, OU fans, you've been waiting for this offensive line. This is the most experienced part of the team. You got one of the best offensive linemen at number 56, Creed Humphrey. And they've been waiting for this offensive line to really lean on somebody, and they're doing it today. Second down and three at the 40. And Major. Maybe a yard on the play. Jaron Thompson slicing in and making the tackle. Yeah, look at that clock. It continues to run. I wouldn't I wouldn't throw it here. I would I would make it another zone read style play with Rattler making a decision here based on what's happening on the edge. Third and three. But I'm conservative. Rattler will throw it. No, he will run it or try to run it, and he will go nowhere. Bottled up and taken down. This time the Texas defense ready. Alfred Collins. Jacoby Jones combining. Good push there from Collins. Good looking young player, 6'5, 300 pounds, and shoved Tyrese Robinson the right guard right back into Rattler's lap. And Rattler did the right thing there, protect the football, live to play another down, and now they'll try to pit him inside the 10 here with a punt. Munchau, ready to send it away. Deshaun Jamison is the deep man for Texas. And it will be downed inside the 10. Another great job by Munshaw. Texas backed up deep, trailing 31-17. Well, Sam Ellinger, fifth time playing Oklahoma, fourth time here in Red River, and it has not gone well for the senior quarterback from Texas. Has not found the rhythm on those deep balls, and then it's been pressure from the OU defense getting to him constantly, and you see he just does not have anywhere to go with the football. No wins down the field, not a lot of separation by those wide receivers, and that's <laughs> what a lot of Texas fans are doing right now. And they'll hand it off to Robinson. And John Robinson, tackled by Radley Hiles. 31-17, our score. Well, what do you do if you're Texas in this situation? I mean, you, you got to go. At this point, it's it's urgency uh, on 10. You know, inside of seven minutes, you need two scores. Gallagher, short pass, caught, but it's a, he's tackled inbounds. White with a nice open field tackle. I love the way Alex Grinch's defense has played today. They've been making Big plays, open field tackles, playing with energy and enthusiasm, aggressiveness. But but remember, the big play has haunted them. 
and haunted them all season long. They have got to avoid giving up a chunk play here. Third down at four to 16. Here comes a blitz. Sam rolls out of the pocket. Nobody open and out of bounds. Look at the defense again for OU. Aguebu with pressure. And those are the names that we're hearing today. Aguebu, Asamoa, Nick Benito. Guys really playing great football. They really are. And Aguebu, look at Sam though. Veteran move reaches that right hand out in order to, looks like, get that first down. And they'll Moving take another the look at that spot. As the runner made the line to gain for a first down. Play is under review. Different story for Texas and their offense. What's wrong with this Texas offense? Is it just the offensive line? Well, we saw them last week against TCU. And they played really well in the second half running the football, but they haven't been able to run the football at all today. And, and I just don't think that they're a great just straight drop back team. Really tough to tell there exactly where he crossed and went out of bounds on this review. I just don't think that there's going to be enough to, to overturn based on what we're seeing right there. This Texas team, after this game, they'll have a bye for next week, followed by a game at home against Baylor. As for Oklahoma, Sooners also have a bye next week followed by trips to TCU and Texas Tech. You know, to go back to your to your question, no offense. And o Texas came in, by the way, as the number one scoring offense in the country, but no offense can succeed when they are forced to be one-dimensional. And here's a good look right here. Boy, I tell you what, that, that you know, when, I, when you couple those looks together, Gus, I could see them bringing this back and, and putting it a half yard short of that line to gain. Mike Pereira is with us. Mike, do you see that with that heel hitting out of bounds and just maybe a half yard short of the line? Yeah, you've got to look at, you know, you look at where the ball is. So the ball's in his right hand. It's impossible to tell exactly where it is when it crosses the sideline. But if you go to that left foot and when the left foot hits down, it sure looks to me like the ball short of the 20, uh, which he had to get to the first down. So. I like it as short, but without a down the line shot, sometimes it's very, very difficult to overturn it. But there, the foot's down, and if he's got to get to the 20, boy, I, I think he's short. Well, and remember now, when they take this amount of time, they're only supposed to use at most two minutes, but when they start to take this amount of time, Mike, they're generally talking through the mechanics of what they need to do as far as where to reset the down markers, what's the clock look like, in order to reestablish this as potentially being reversed and, and a half yard short. So I, I fully expect them here to to move it back and, and make this a fourth and short, don't you? Yeah, and remember the two minute is just a guideline. I mean, that's they've recommended that they get all the decisions made in two minutes. Um, but if something becomes critical where they have to look at clock, like you say, um, then it might take longer than two minutes. It certainly does appear that this is. And I think Texas is resigned. When you to see that those fact. chains. You look at the chains going backwards now at the top. I think that's an indication that it's going to be short. Yep. So now it's going to boil down. Thank you, Mike. Boil down, Gus, to a fourth down. Got to go for it here. Yeah. After reviewing the play, when the runner was out of bounds, the ball was short of the line to gain. The ball will be placed at the 19 and a half yard line. It's fourth down. We set the clock to six minutes, 36 seconds. Gus, the gutsy call here is the fake quarterback run, jump pass to the running back out of the backfield on, on a little seam route. You're probably just going to see the quarterback run this one, Sam Ellinger, behind a couple of lead blockers. Game clock. We set the clock to six minutes and 36 seconds. Six, 36. If, if you really want to be gutsy and go for it and go for a chunk play, that's what you do is Cade Brewer's in the backfield and you take off as if he's the lead back like this and then you hop over and throw it to him. Gallagher wants the first down. He dives forward and gets it. I don't know if gutsy is the right move right now for these <laughs> long horns. I, I hear you, but you know what? At, at some point, you're going to enter desperation mode because... 
The clock is running. You're down two scores. They've got to pick up big yardage here soon. They need to score on this drive, is for sure, as he drops it off. Brewer gets out of bounds. And now the pass rush becomes even more important because the last thing you want as a defensive back for Oklahoma is Ellinger with a lot of time to beat you down the field. So those big guys up front for Texas have got to protect their senior quarterback while OU is desperately trying to get to him. Second down and three at the 28. Six minutes to play in regulation. Ellinger. Well, short. Jaden Davis in the vicinity as uh, Schooler was the intended receiver. And all day long, what I've seen, every time that second down doesn't convert and they go to third down, Oklahoma rolls new defensive linemen in to try to get fresh pass rush on the field for the third down opportunity. Third down and three. Ellinger, here comes the pressure. Ellinger finds Robinson out of the backfield in the first down. As he's finally knocked out of bounds, but he's inside Oklahoma territory. Turner Yell escorting him out of bounds. Yeah, you got a little swing route from the back right here, and he just gets picked off. That was 23, Deshaun White in coverage, and he just couldn't get through that little pick route from the outside. First down. Ellinger now to Robinson out of the backfield. Nice move. Lance's his foot, changes directions. Turner yell again to a 25-yard gain, followed by a 13-yard gain for Robinson. And you're starting to see why they're so high on him in Austin. Ellinger looking, rolling, directing, and picks up a first down. Uh, now we're starting to see those chunks, right? Now another, what, 10 yards for the Longhorns and moving quickly down the field, exactly what the doctor ordered. And this tempo is helping them out quite a bit. No pass rush on this series so far. Gallagher picked up 11. First down from the OU 34. Gallagher going deep. that has not been able to get any turnovers. Only three on the season coming into today's ball game, and then they've been able to get their hand on the football. There is a flag here really late. I think one of the OU players just took his helmet off on the field. And partner, I believe coming into this game only two turnovers for Oklahoma and they forced three today there was no foul on the play for unsportsmanlike my conduct it's first down Oklahoma football how about Woody Washington getting his chance little grab gets away with it and then goes up the ladder ball underthrown a touch and Washington comes away with a huge interception this OU defense standing tall and Red River. Big Note Saturday is presented by AT&T Business, keeping your business connected now with 5G nationwide. And it's sponsored by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That's what they're playing folks, for, folks. The Golden Hat. Last year won by Oklahoma. Right now, the Sooners are five minutes away from winning another golden hat here at Red River as T.J. Clinton 
runs it straight ahead. Let's check in with Jenny Tab. Well, Gus, as great as that play was from Woody Washington, let me tell you what Coach Grinch had to say. He was livid, pulling the entire defense together. They have been harping on finishing. It's the word everyone's been using. Pat Fields had recently pulled the secondary together, saying we need to end on a good note. That celebration was not Oklahoma defense. He was livid. The message was received, and I expect to see a little bit, uh, a little bit more discipline moving forward. All right. Thank you very much, Jen. And here's here's the reason he did that. Right. Texas, two weeks ago, with three minutes and 13 seconds left, came back against Texas Tech down 15. Right. So like, it's it's not over. This this game. Is there's still a lot to be had out there, and, and Ellinger knows it, and he, sure, he's frustrated, and Texas has not played well, in particular in this half. They haven't scored in this half. They haven't stopped Oklahoma's run game, but this is where it comes down to defense and offensive line, right? Like, oh, you can end this game on the field with their offense if their offensive line can get it done. Legend. I don't know. This Oklahoma team, especially on defense, a little different talent level than Texas Tech, I would say, and they have been playing extremely well here in the second half. We'll see. Welcome back to the Cotton Bowl, the 2020 Red River Showdown. And this game has been called a showdown, a sh rivalry, and a shootout. Not a shootout today. It's been a great game of big plays and defensive plays, especially for Oklahoma. Here's the first piece, and look at that. Nice open field tackle. Jet Bush. And Texas calls a timeout, their final timeout. See what the Longhorns can do when they get it back. Thirty-one seventeen, four forty-seven to go here in the fourth quarter. Lincoln Riley has to feel good about where his team is at this particular point. But remember, back-to-back -back weeks they've blown leads. Twenty-one points at home to Kansas State. Eleven points last week Iowa State. This ball takes a bounce and is down to midfield. Next up, Big 12 action continues on Fox as K-State faces the TCU Horn Frogs. That's coming your way next right here on Fox and streaming on the Fox Sports app. I'm looking forward to seeing that game when we go to the airport. Or well, maybe we can just drive. Yo, let's just drive over and watch the game. Over. Think we can get in? I'm sure. They've got fans. I want to see my main man, Deuce. Deuce, I can't wait to see him. I think Max Duggan found himself a nice rhythm last week in their big win in Austin. So that's going to be a great game in Fort Worth. First down to Ted at midfield. Ellinger finds Ingram. Ingram trying to get out of bounds. Will not. That's because Woody Washington, he's had a game today, Woody. Absolutely has. And he's in the game because they wanted to change some things up in the back end. Again, they've had all their starters back. They've started 90 games together back there, but they wanted to get new blood, fresh blood, and he's certainly paid that off with a huge game here today. Elliger on second and five. Going for it all. And incomplete. Joshua Moore, the intended receiver, but back deep. Jaden Davis, no flag on the play. Davis with great coverage. Top of your screen, this has been a good battle all day long. And Jaden Davis is step for step, and then right here he goes back and reaches for the ball. They were de definitely hand fighting right there. They're kind of both trying to uh, fight off of one another. There's definitely some contact, but they've been letting them play down the field all day long. Been very consistent down the field, these officials have. Third down and five at the 45. Ellinger scrambles, picks up the first, and even more. Ellinger still running. Dives forward. Texas still fighting. Trey Norwood stops some clock at 352. 
Boy, if they can score some somewhere short of that 315 mark, they're going to feel real good about themselves. And right there, offside from Benito, and they'll offside. get a free five yards. Defense. Number 11 was in the neutral zone, causing the offense to react. Five-yard penalty. It's first down. And this is exactly why Alex Grinch was so animated on the sideline, as Ginny told us after their last series, that interception, because he knew they were going to be back on the field and in the pressure cooker, which they are right here in the last 347. Sam Ellinger going through his progressions, buying time now, dancing. Ellinger, and it just get rid of it. Great coverage in the secondary by Oklahoma. Nobody open. There's a flag. It was thrown really late. The far side. Oh, looks like that much time. You always think, I always think to myself like a defensive holding in the secondary. Prior to the pass, holding. Defense number 10, half the distance to the goal. It's first down. I guess that's why nobody was open. Pat Fields. Got caught for a hold. There's Pat Fields. Yep, absolutely. Holding Kai Money. Kai Money's trying to work away and work open for his quarterback. And was just being held. First down and goal at the nine. Empty backfield for Sam Ellinger. Whittington comes in motion. Ellinger delivers and it's caught. Touchdown, Texas. Joshua Moore. They get the job done. What a great series. Helped out by that hold, and they get the touchdown with 328 left. Man, credit Sam Ellinger. He is running around back there. He has been beat up today and comes back and puts together a really good drive. And Joshua Moore to the pylon for six. Lots of time, Gus. There is lots you, of time you said in, this, it, in this game. Just when I thought that Texas was. Close to giving this game away or giving this game, giving up on this game. Extra point is good and they're right in it. That's because they've got a leader in Sam Ellinger. He finds Joshua Moore, the Richard sophomore. Alex Grinch knew. 31-24. 31 to 24 as Cameron Dicker comes on. Onside kick coming, you think? Or is there too much time left? Well, they were successful a couple of weeks ago with that onside kick. It was Malcolm Epps, number 19, who secured it for them. And he is on the field. It looks like it. They are lined up for the onside kick, and we'll see if they can get it again. OU's misaligned. They don't have enough guys down here at the bottom. There it is. Takes a great bounce for Texas. Oh, man. Dicker, what a great onside kick. That was, timing just a little bit off for Epps. That was perfect, wasn't it? I mean, the hop, and, and OU was not lined up correctly. They did not have enough guys down there, and that bounce right there, and Epps tries to go up for it, and it's just over his reach as no he and Stogner. For kickoff out of bounds, really on the field as Oklahoma touched the ball. The loose ball went out of bounds, so it is Oklahoma's ball first down at that spot. Oh, and OU is fortunate because that was a perfect execution of the onside kick and Epps just couldn't quite get there. Epps is 6'6". Six, six. Stogner for OU, he's also 6'6". Six, six. And we had the, the rebound situation at the rim right there. That was a heck of a kick. And it just goes over his hand. So no timeouts now. And OU, basically a first down here, will, will likely do it. Pledger right behind Spencer Rattler. Rattler running it, and he'll be tackled for it. Big loss and lost it. Oh, my goodness. Oklahoma says they have it. I think Creed Humphrey 
might be the one at the bottom of the pile the with that ball. The fumble recovered by the offense. Actually, it's Hall. Oh, is it Hall? Oh, my Jeremiah gosh. Hall. Wow. Watch his. So Humphrey is right here, and he's the first one, and he kind of jumps down. Stockner's in there, and then Hall, 27, just goes in there and muscles it away. Oh, Herman thought that they had it. Oh, my goodness. Rattler cannot run it again. He's got to hand the football off. Gives it to Pledger. Pledger. Crosses the line of scrimmage. Clock continues to run. Gus, I'm sending the house at the running back here if I'm Texas. I am going to bait Spencer Rattler into pulling this ball and running it himself after that huge mistake. I know Rattler's not going to want to pull this ball. He's going to want to hand it off. There's no doubt in my mind. So I'm sending everybody I have with the flow towards the running back to get this stop if I'm Texas. Third down and nine. Stoops in motion. Rattler's going to throw it over the middle. Stogner, the intended receiver, clock stops at 2.04. Oh, Texas out of timeouts. But they'll get it again with an eternity remaining. Remember what Sam Ellinger told his coach at Texas Tech. He said, they left us too much time. We're going to go down and win the game. He's I can't the believe they look threw on the his ball. Face. Gus, I can't believe they threw that ball. You're going to give them the ball back inside the 10-yard line, the way Munchau is punting, with about a minute 16 left. No and timeouts. And, and no timeouts. Now they're going to have two full minutes. Boy, that's, you know, if it's successful, everyone talks about how brilliant you are, but I thought that should have been a run play. Granted, it's right in Stockner's hands, and he's got to catch that ball. Certainly, it's open. It was there. I get it. But this is why I'm sure you that run every the ball. I'm sure that every Oklahoma fan watching this game also, like you, thought that was going to be a run 100%, play. hundred percent. A hundred percent. Way too much time left. So Munchau, they need his best right here. Jamison will run it. He's got a lane. Jamison still on the move. Jamison. Deshaun Jamison with a good run, a flag down. During the return, holding, receiving team, number 21, 10-yard penalty, first down, Texas. And that's Crawford called for the hole. Eton Crawford, freshman from Tyler. Going to be the top of your screen. Here's, here's 21. Watch this here, kind of moving this way, and he gets hit. And then he just drags Brendan Radley Hiles to the ground. And that's what was called. But here you go. You got a minute 52, no timeouts. Number 11 has been dreaming of playing for the Longhorns since he was a baby. Here's a shot. Stuff of legends right here from the 16. Ellinger in trouble. Ellinger throws. Incomplete. What's the mindset right here, partner? Flag on the play at the 16-yard line. You need to score. You have no timeouts. How do you work it up the field? I'm, gonna, I'm trying not to be desperate, right? Because a desperate quarterback forces the football, and generally that ball is turned over, very similar to what Rattler did a week ago at Iowa State. Started the pass, holding, defense, number 10, 10-yard 10 penalty, automatic first stop. The number one thing for a quarterback here is you have got to be confident. When you get ready to throw that ball you've got to step into it and throw with a supreme amount of confidence make sure you understand all the details what you're reading why you're reading it make sure your formation is correct and cut it loose Ellinger has confidence in spades he steps up gonna get out of bounds after the first no look at that move and he does clock stops at 134 Sam Ellinger He's done this before, this season in Lubbock against Texas Tech. 
They've tried time and time again to take shots down the field. At some point, they're going to take another shot down the field on this series. 18-yard gain, first and 10 at the 44. Ellinger with time. Ellinger caught and out of bounds for Eagles. And what does he have? on the last two series he's had time to throw the football the pass rush was eating him up in the third quarter early in the fourth quarter and now he has time to survey the field and these defensive backs are not holding up and you're seeing some separation with these wide receivers a 16-yard gain first and 10 at the 40. sam looking drops it off incomplete malcolm epps the targeted receiver. On the flip side, OU was very successful because they were aggressive. You know, Alex Grinch has got to think about trying to dial something up and send a pressure at Ellinger and try to get somebody in his face and get him to throw the ball before he wants to. Second down and 10 at the 40. The Oklahoma 40. Sam Ellinger. Wants to run, Ellinger on the move. And a first down again. Confidence, maturity, leadership. This young man embodies all of those. Gus, Oklahoma is falling into the same trap that Texas Tech did. Texas Tech tried to drop eight guys in coverage, rush three. There was no pass rush. Ellinger ate him up. He ran the football for big chunk yards. That's exactly what OU is doing. OU has got to pressure right here, and they're going to take a timeout and talk about it. Remember, Texas has no timeouts remaining. 31 24, 112 to play. Thirty-one twenty-four. regardless of the outcome of this game. Lincoln Riley is going to be questioned about throwing that football. Well, if, if he didn't and ran the football, you're sitting there at this point, and there's about 32 seconds left, somewhere around there, 40 seconds left. It's a, it's a much different dynamic. That's certainly the case. First down and 10 of the 30 for Ellinger. Sam Ellinger with all day to throw a flag on the play throw to the sideline and it's a caught a catch by joshua moore but Holding. there is a flag offense number 70 10 yard penalty it's first off here's why that timeout was so important is because you got a little bit of a breather for those defensive linemen and there isaiah thomas again beating christian jones around the edge and jones had no choice but to drag him down and now this is this is a precarious situation here and you've got to start thinking about how quickly you can get back up to the line of scrimmage and, and sam's got to be careful about where he's throwing this football over the middle of the field because it's going to take a lot of time to get to the next snap first and 20 at the 40. Ellinger lines up over the middle at the 20 yard line Joshua Moore, a 19-yard gain on first and 20. Clock at 50 seconds, second and one. Ellinger hands it off. Ingram picks up the first down. Clock stops. Only temporarily. They'll set the chains, and then they'll wind it again and it'll be wound right now. So now we're gonna be 30 seconds in under. First down and 10 at the 17. Ellinger slides, delivers, incomplete. Tariq Black, the intended receiver, clock stops at 24 seconds, second and 10. Texas out of timeout, Oklahoma has one. And because of that, because he cannot take a sack, it basically ends the game. It would be very difficult to get back on the line of scrimmage. Texas has to get that ball past the 12-yard line. 
in order to get the clock stopped if they're going to complete the ball short of the goal line. Second and ten. Ellinger steps up. Incomplete. And a flag. Wow. Kai Money, the intended receiver. Pat Fields. Flagged on the play. With 18 seconds to go. Here's the coverage down the field. Kai Passing Money's going first. for the ball. Defense, number 10, 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. And there's the grab on the right shoulder. You see his right hand full of jersey, pulling the right shoulder back. Alex Grinch doesn't like it, but boy, how about this? Kai Money, the walk on, gives Texas a first down and goal at the two. Now, Gus, you. you you really shouldn't run the football here. Even though your best play is probably running a quarterback power, you got to think about trying to throw it here because of the clock. First down and goal of the two. 18 seconds remaining in regulation. Sam Ellinger in the gun. More in motion. Ellinger jump pass. Touchdown, Texas! Whoa! Sam! What a read. OU finally tried to blitz, and Ellinger made him pay. They come off of the left side. Running back into the flat, wide open. Cameron Dicker. Looking to equalize. And he does. Ha <laughs> ha. This is Red River. A rivalry. A showdown. And now a shootout, folks. Bullets are flying in South Dallas. Ellinger. Two passing touchdowns. Two rushing touchdowns. No, none more dramatic. And what just happened when Texas took over with no and partner? He took over with no timeouts on the 16 yard line. And OU gave him a free 40 seconds. And where are we sitting? 14 seconds left in the game. There was too much time for a veteran quarterback. The, you got a veteran on the other side. It's not just about the situation. His biggest enemy is always the clock, in particular with no timeouts. Here's Rambo, gets an opportunity to return it. And Rambo, he sticks his nose in it. And with eight seconds left, Oklahoma will take over. Our score, 31-31. Now Spencer Rattler. Fourth quarter's continuing oh. to be a problem for Oklahoma. Blown leads continuing but this time just but this time Lincoln Riley's gonna have to shoulder a lot of the blame for that throwing that throw on third down on third down yeah I listen I, I agree and and on the other side because I didn't we didn't get to touch on it but Tom Herman had a decision there right go for two in the win or kick the extra point here's why he kicked the extra point and that was the correct decision OU's offense has been stuck in neutral for the better part of the second half of the fourth quarter while the Texas offense is in fifth gear or should I say 11th with Sam Ellinger and now that guy has got a chance to win Red River in OT. Well Sam Ellinger has done it all here in the last couple of drives. There is the first touchdown. Then Riley decides to throw it on third down, leaves Ellinger too much time. Then he goes eight plays, a little over a minute 30. Legs, arm, 
got the help of the P.I. down the field from Pat Fields, and then ultimately a beautiful read on the blitz from OU, dumps it right over the top, and Ingram finds a little redemption after that fumble a week ago, and he's in the end zone for the Texas Longhorns, and it's 31 up. Woo! I tell you what, I told you, I told you, you after told the end, I me. said there's still a lot of time left. That's what Alex Grinch was shouting at his defense as well. Two logo is tails, the call is heads. It is tails, Oklahoma, you've won the toss. You'll play on defense, which end of the field would you like to play on? Okay, it'll be Texas ball, first and 10, going this way. Good luck. Well, I just touched on it right before our break, and now in overtime as you take a look at the rules. Texas is in full rhythm, right? They're like a racehorse in full lather offensively. And on the other side of that, OU's defense has got to just feel totally demoralized. They played a brilliant game, Gus, for 56 minutes. The game's not 56 minutes long. And Alex Grinch is trying to get his guys going. The one thing that has left for OU is the pressure on the quarterback. They have not been able to get pressure in the last couple of series on Ellinger. He's had way too much time. He's been able to run down the field. And keep in mind, folks, when you're looking at these two quarterbacks, yes, they're talented. Ellinger's been really, really good all season long in the fourth quarter and overtime, whereas Rattler, that's where he struggled. Oklahoma won that overtime game in 1996, 30 to 27, so Ellinger, and the Longhorns on offense first. Ingram in motion. We start overtime. Ellinger near side. Whittington. Pat Fields with a tackle. One of the mistakes I always see from teams as they get into overtime, in particular teams that have big comebacks in order to force overtime, is they go back to their base offense and here's the thing because their base offense put them in the hole to begin with i would have come back out and gotten into that two minute type of rhythm that they just used to go down the field second down and nine of the 24. sam ellinger winds up in the end zone complete. no flag on the play eagles kind of turned around felt that he may have been held uh, I, th I think Radley Hiles defensively. Yeah, Radley Hiles gets away with a lot of contact and a lot of grabbing. You see how he's grabbing. He's got all sorts of contact as he's trying to, to, to defend, turning him down. Then he puts his arms up. Herman wanted the call. I think he probably should have gotten it. Third down and nine at the 24. Ellinger. In the pocket, underneath, caught in a first down. Jordan Whittington, the redshirt freshman. Can't ask your defensive backs to cover this long. Great job by the offensive line. Check out this pocket. Ellinger works, 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 then finally gets to Whittington down the field for the conversion. But Joel, what Whittington happened to the... A catch for a first down. Play is under review. Joel, what happened to the Oklahoma pass rush? I think they just got tired, and that's been an issue Five sacks for OU today. Remember, they had nine in this game last year. They're trying to look at the spot, not necessarily whether he secured the catch or not, because it was pretty clearly a good catch. And I think that they were looking at exactly where the, the catch was made. He was... I thought clearly beyond the line to gain, not even close. I mean, all he had to do was get to the 15-yard line. It's pretty clear, so this should be a, a quick review. Herman did not like it because, again, he wanted that rhythm. You know, one of the things, though, Gus, is, yeah, Oklahoma's a bit gassed maybe up front, After right? They've been trying. Ruling on the field of a catch is confirmed. It's first down. But they saw, they've also stopped blitzing you know we've seen some of those opportunities for Asamoah and Deshaun White and Nick Benito and all those guys and, and they've stunted and gotten loose a little bit John Michael Terry now in the game number 40 
and, and that they've been dropping back in coverage more and that has not worked in the last couple of series and I would expect for them to try to pressure Ellinger a little bit here as they get closer to the goal line first down at the 14 for Texas here at overtime Ellinger keeps it Ellinger hits the end sound out of bounds inside the five and another first down Asamoa with the saving tackle this kid is brilliant i tell you what man there is just no quit they were they were lifeless for the second half the third quarter it was like texas wasn't even out here participating lincoln riley's bunch was owning this game and then sam ellinger took over first down and goal at the three keontae ingram in the backfield play fake sam ellinger rolls looks sam oh touchdown He's got this entire team and school on his back right now in Red River. Rolling, rolling, looking downfield. They weren't going to hand that off. Remember Ingram fumbled last week. This was all going to be Sam outside of the pocket, finds the opening and leaps into the end zone. What a day for Sam Ellinger. And now, Cameron Dicker, extra point, pulling. 38 31 in overtime. Oklahoma has to score a touchdown. Three straight weeks. Unbelievable. OU has been down, or excuse me, up by double digits. And now, Texas 21 unanswered. They were dead to rights in this game they were dead to rights against texas tech as well and he calmly brought him back and he calmly brought his club back today ellinger's been brilliant in a few moments some of you in kansas and texas will be taken to the start of k-state tcu that game is also available on fs2 and streaming live on the fox sports app we will get you out there at the immediate conclusion of our game if you are leaving us but want to watch our game we are also available on the app those of you in Texas, I'm sorry. So here's Oklahoma, Rattler, the red shirt freshman. Can he respond? Buys time, crosses the line of scrimmage. Still running. Great run for Spencer Rattler. Finally tackled by Osai. And there's a Longhorn down. Far side of the field. I think that's B.J. Foster, number 25. They're already down one safety. Caden Stearns was unable to go. He had a toe injury coming in. Tried it out in warm-ups, was unable to go. So it's been Chris Brown and B.J. Foster. I tell you what, though, as the player is looked at on the field, Sam Ellinger, what a leader. Just a great player, one of the greats in the history of Texas football. And he knew from an early age that being the quarterback at the University of Texas was in his future. Who are you, Sam? It's Chris Sims, Chomp, New York. I'm Chris Sims. You're Chris Sims? Woo! Oh, my goodness. Been a Longhorn for a long time, partner. You dream of playing here, and there's one game that you dream of playing in when you dream of playing for Texas, and it's this one. And in his fourth Red River, he saved the best for last. He's played great against OU in his career, but nothing like this. It hasn't been. His stats might not show that this was his best game against OU. This was his best game against OU. 28 of 47, 358 total yards, five total touchdowns, and that one interception. Still a lot of football left here. Second and short for OU. From the 17, Rattler with the handoff. Major tries to get outside. No, Rattler keeps it and picks up the first down. Great deception for Spencer Rattler as he gains three and a first down OU. That's Jeremiah Hall, number 27. It's a big loss for him because he's on the field quite a bit as their H-back. Moves around, very talented. They love to get him out of the backfield into the flat 
in particular once they get into the red zone. He's a mismatch on linebackers because of his quickness and ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. So what a season here. What a season it's been for us so far, partner. Oh. First, we see Arkansas State win at Kansas State. <laughs> That's right. And then in our second game, Kansas State wins at Oklahoma. Then last week, TCU wins at Texas. Texas comes into Red River as the underdogs down and now here in overtime they're up 38 31. Well, this is the thing about overtime though is that momentum is hard to sustain because of field position right i mean he's going right back out there at the 25. So do you like the current system of how they play I, overtime I, or would you just like to i don't them to play a regular period of football i don't I don't love this, but I don't love the NFL's version either. I just think that this sport in general doesn't lend itself to a great overtime setup. So Hall walks off on his own. That's a good sign for OU. Should be noted, Gus, that in really big moments this year, Spencer Rattler has made critical errors and force the football. We're about to find out if he's learned from those mistakes. Generally, you don't make big mistakes twice. Usually the good players don't. He's gotta take what the defense gives. He's gotta make sure that he understands what coverage is being run opposite him, and he knows where he's going with the football. First down. At the Texas 13 for Rattler. He needs a touchdown. Marcus Major now in the backfield. Rattler. Underneath, safe play, Stogner open, finding a soft spot. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Stogner was clearly the number one receiver in the progression. He was open, he gets the ball. That's managing the offense, and that's what Rattler has done here in this second half. After he got benched in the first half, he's come out here, and he's tried to play disciplined football for OU that has to continue here in these big moments. Second and six at the nine. Oklahoma still with a chance at another first down. Stoops in motion. Rattler hands it off. Major hit behind the line of scrimmage and tackled for a loss. Well, here you go. Osai, Overshown, Graham all in on the play. Third down and eight. Biggest two snaps of the football that OU has. Clearly four down territory. You don't have to force the ball past the chains. Rambo's getting a lot of cushion at the top of the screen. Here's Rattler looking. Rattler sliding. Touchdown! Oklahoma Stogner climbed the ladder and comes down with it. Great throw by Rattler. What a play from Stogner, and really a brilliant throw from Rattler. I mean, he kind of forces the ball into coverage here, and this is where he's going the whole time. He wants 6-6 six, six against 6-1. Six, and over there, it looks like Jalen Green even gets away with a little bit of a hole, but that's like feeding the postman. Throws it up high. Stogner comes down with strong hands. Berkic for the tie. And it's good. 38 38. Guess what, folks? We've got some more football coming from Dallas. The Red River Showdown has certainly turned out to be a shootout. We got an instant classic here at Red River. 38 up. Oklahoma and Texas as we head into our second overtime. Woo. Hey, man, I'm wore out. <laughs> but that young man is not. No, and, and by Big the way, Sam. Rattler answered him right Yes, there. he did. You know, that, that was a, that's a big possession. That's the best football I've seen from Rattler this season. He's done things that are flashier, Gus, certainly. But, but that's, you know, that, 
Hey, man, sometimes you got to put your chest out That's there right. and go out there and play in big moments, and that was an excellent series, and he'll go right back onto the field. And that same approach has to take place. you got to be careful with the football. Know the defense. Know where you're going with the ball. The last thing that you want to do is be careless with the football here and give Ellinger a chance to just kick a field goal for the win. So Oklahoma starts the second period with the ball. First down at the 25. Rattler throwing it on first down over the middle. Stop here again, and he's down inside the five. Austin Stockner upended by Chris Brown, but what a game he's having. Yeah, absolutely, and big moments, too. The young tight end coming through, and it's certainly looking like he is a guy Rattler can rely on in these big moments. Andrews, Calcaterra, now Stockner, a sophomore. Six catches, 56 yards. Gus Hall is back on the field, number 27. When they get under center, they love to roll Rattler out and get Hall the ball in the flat. Play fake. Rattler sets up in the end zone. Incomplete. Stogner was open, but that ball was thrown behind him a bit. It would have been a tough catch. It's like it came out of Rattler's hand. Kind of awkward, didn't it? It didn't look like it was. Yeah, look as it's. it's Kind of end over end almost as Stockner was trying to pull that one in. Second down goal at the three. Rattler, play fake, bounces, throws. Coverage on the play by Deshaun Jameson intended for Rambo. Brings up third down and goal from the three. Whew. What a great play from Jameson because this is a beautiful pass and Rambo looks like he's going to get it and then Jameson comes in and knocks it out. Beautiful job working through the hands by the defensive back there. This has been a spot where OU has struggled a little bit inside the five-yard line, Gus. They struggled last week. Remember, the, the one of the first series of the game today, they had to settle for a field goal. That is not what Lincoln Riley is going to want to do, in particular with number 11 on the other side. And it looks like the injured player is Jaron Thompson. He's one of the young safeties. So now, my goodness, how about this safety depth being tested for Texas? B.J. Foster went down on the last series. Caden Stearns went down in warm-ups. Now Jaron Thompson goes down. So that's three safeties that Texas has lost here today. And on this third down, look where that ball is spotted right at the three yard line where you would snap a two point conversion. If I'm Lincoln Riley, I would go to my best two point play from the middle of the field because you can't pick your hash right here, which you would normally do on a two point play, but you've got a two point play that you love from the middle of the field. And that's the play that I would go with right here on a big third down. Most likely, if it's not a run, some kind of timing, quick timing hit. I just doubt that it's a run and for my money, I, Stogner is 6'6". He's made the biggest catches here in the last couple of series. And the safeties are decimated for Texas. I think you work the middle of the field, and it's about number 18. Here you go. Third down to go. Rattler. He wants to run it. Rattler. Touchdown, OU! The redshirt freshman benched in the first half. Started the second half. His coach got his attention, and he's playing a terrific second half of football. He's put the ball on the ground, and here he leans forward, and is he in when he hits the ground? Boy, it looks like he might have been a touch short. Really on the field of a touchdown, the play is under review. Wow. We'll get a better look of where he actually is. 
Was he landing on the Texas player or is he down? It looks like he's probably down there. It's hard to say. Look, he's sitting on the forearm. See, here's the problem. You don't actually see a body part down in video evidence. Gus, I, man, that is a that's a tough review from from my perspective. I think he's probably short. This will be a much better look. There is kind of his calf is down right there. His leg is certainly probably down, and I I think he's short. Mike Pereira, your thoughts? Yeah, well, this is the kind of one you've got to piece together, and you know that really what goes down is the calf, and then, again, when you shoot from this side, you don't get a good look. I, I think he's down. I mean, here it does appear that he uh, is on the arm of the defender, but that other shot, the other shot where you can see the calf down before the body kind of extends forward, this shot here. So you're going to actually see, well, it's the other shot from the other side, but calf, if you piece it together, it's probably down now. I, hard to overturn it, but if you ask me, I think he's short. That's, you got to, Mike, I'm with you, but, but at the same time, I think both of us are probably saying the word probably. And replay is designed to be a situation where you're only overturning a play if it's conclusive. It's probably short. Let's just say I would not want to be D. Anderson, the replay official up in the booth <laughs> right now. I'm, am I right, Mike? Yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, they've had an issue or two so far in this game, but you know, you got to piece them together. I mean, here you can clearly, clearly see that the ball is short. But you can't tell if he's, together. On, if he's laying on one of the body parts right. of yeah, the Yeah, he's Texas laying players. on the arm to me, so the backside really doesn't get down. It's the calf that gets down first. And there it's down. And, and to me, if you piece that together, the ball has, a, the, you know, the body has a surged forward. I, I, I think they probably... This one may take more than two minutes, Joel. Yeah, I think, and, and I think they're probably going to reverse this one. And Riley is going to have a monster decision. It'll be fourth down and goal. Yeah, they're Inside the one. Yeah, they're moving the ball. It's going to be on the half-yard line. After reviewing the play, when the runner's shin was down, the ball was short of the goal line. Ball be placed at the half-yard line. It's fourth down. What do you do? I mean, if, it, if it's me, I, I go for it because I just I don't trust that we're going to stop Sam Ellinger. Right. I, I, I just don't. And the offense is coming back on the field. Fourth down and goal here. The second overtime. Oklahoma's going for it. Spencer Rattler, the red shirt freshman. White knuckler for both teams, both fan bases. Marcus Major, the deep man. Rattler, 6-1. Texas took a timeout. Right in the snap. Texas takes their one and only timeout of this overtime period. He was going for the play action pass too. You see that? Yeah. He the heavy fake. And, and credit Tom Herman for holding his water as long as he did because not only did he get a timeout, but he got it so late that he got the hand tipped from OU. So now OU is going to have to go back and call a different play. He can't come out in the, in, in the same formation or play because they just showed him their hand there right before the timeout. They've run it really well all day long. You'd be tempted to try to just punch it in with that big offensive line who has done a heck of a job. They've run the ball for over 200 yards, 206 to be exact on 50 carries. Bledger on the field, along with Jeremiah Hall, the H-back number 27. Bledger the deep man. 
Fourth down and goal. Quarterback sneak. Rattler. Touchdown, OU. So Lincoln Riley gambles, and it pays off. And he leaned on probably his best player. I know he doesn't touch the football except for the snap, I guess, on every single play, but Creed Humphrey just get behind big 56. Gets a nice push there from Tyrese Robinson, number 52, the right guard. And Rattler, 6'1", 205. Gets across that goal line. Good push. Look at that push in there. Even Adrian Ely, 59, with a good push as well. Berkic in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. 45-38. Spencer Rattler may have found something after being benched with about 11 minutes to go in the second quarter. Came back to start the second half, and he was a different quarterback. He, he absolutely was. And you know what he did is he just started running the offense. And doing what he was supposed to do, what he's coached to do, and it's paid off in a huge way for him and this OU team here as they're able to get a couple of touchdowns. One in the first overtime, then here in the second overtime. And now, guess who's back on the field? Sam Ellinger. Down, down seven. Something tells me he just loves it, right? It's like he wanted him to score. He, he loves these moments of pressure. Texas starts with the 25. First down. Ingram in the backfield with Sam Ellinger. Ellinger, thinking about running it, goes forward and is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you what, Isaiah Thomas, the redshirt junior, number 95 from Tulsa, has had a heck of a football game today. He sure has, and, and think about it, that was back-to-back -back offensive series now in those overtimes with OU's offense. So this defense, Gus, has had a little time to rest. We'll see if they're more fresh, in particular on that defensive line, who was clearly winded at the end of the game. Second down, 10 10. Elliger in trouble. Elliger gets downfield. Elliger still running. Elliger on his feet. Holy Toledo! Big Sam! Whoa! Touchdown, Texas! I mean, this is an incredible run from Ellinger, but they got away with an egregious hold on Keontae Ingram. Watch 26 working against number 24, Asamoah, right here. He's he's going to tackle Ellinger, and he's just absolutely held right there. He can't get there. Ellinger finds the corner, cuts back, and is in the end zone. But a really poor missed call, and Texas takes advantage. Cameron Dicker comes on to attempt the extra point. It's like a superhero, <laughs> Sam Ellinger. Unbelievable. Uh, replay is going to stop it again. So, I would imagine, based on where he was at, they'll see if his feet were in bounds. Yeah, if he was in right he was here, there. he was getting really close, and and he was, without question, on that replay. Yep. Clearly in. Whew, what a run. Oh my goodness. What Man. a competitor. Just a competitor. After reviewing the play, moving on the field is confirmed. It's a touchdown. Big Sam. Elliger with a career best. Four rushing touchdowns today. His third career 100-yard rushing day. Cameron Dicker has to make the extra point. Got it down, up, and good. 45-45. Little smile from Big Sam. Picking him up.
Put them down. Texas OU. Red River. All right. Forty-five, forty-five. we head to our third overtime period. And in this third overtime, now they're going to have to start going for two if they score a touchdown. So get, get your popcorn ready. If you, I guess right now it's like get your third bucket of popcorn ready. <laughs> <laughs> and your Raisinets. That's, that's right. And your Diet Dr. Pepper. That's right. And by the way, those of you that may or may not have wanted a high score today. You were sure glad overtime came. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so Ellinger and Texas, they'll start first from the 25. Whittington in motion, Ellinger running it. And Ellinger diving forward inside the 20. Pat Fields. You know, the, the word that keeps coming to mind right now with Sam, and, and I don't want to make this all just, it's not an individual sport. And listen, they fought hard, and the offensive line has given them time late in the game in particular to get down the field. But his, his will, you know, I mean, Gus, I did, you can almost, being here in the stadium, you can almost feel Ellinger's will right now on this game. Eight of six on the last play, second down and four. Sam Ellinger, quick strike, Whittington with space and a first down. That field brings him down. Good, nice, easy completions on the outside. Good blocking over there from Eagles in front of Whittington. Now they'll switch sides here, and Joshua Moore will come down to the short side of the field, and Whittington will have some space there at the top side. First down at the 15. Big Sam splits out, looks. And it just gets rid of it. Nice catch. <laughs> <laughs> he threw it to the X receiver. <laughs> oh, Maybe man. Sam got a little confused. He saw that the X receiver there. Wonderful catch. <laughs> Second down and 10. From the 15. Oh, watch out for the quarterback draw here. No linebackers in there. Now Radley Hiles is going to come into the middle of the field. Ellinger. Dancing. And incomplete. So that brings up a very important third down. And long. Nick Benito, Isaiah Thomas with pressure. Well, I keep stressing, though, they, he's had too much time. He's had way too much time to throw. If he gets that amount of time, he's going to make him pay. These defensive backs, they're just getting tired. They can't cover for that long. They've got to find a pass rush here. Third down 10 from the 15. Who's in shape is the question. Ellinger. Sam breaking tackles. And he goes down. The Sooners trying to break Texas's serve here. Well, and Benito did a great look. He's just kind of eyeing Sam. He's he's the spy for Ellinger to run, and then that's when Ellinger breaks contain, and he's there to bring him down. Nice call by Alex Grinch to spy Ellinger, who has really hurt Oklahoma with his feet here late in the game. And there, Benito was assigned to the quarterback, and he brings him down. So Dicker comes on to attempt a 32-yard field goal. a junior college transfer is one of the most highly recruited junior college players in the country. They desperately needed help. Alex Grinch couldn't even watch his back as to the play. And Winfrey is able to get the push he needs to block the kick. Not so fast. Turner yells this. 
So Oklahoma, what's the philosophy in this kind of scenario, Joel? I, I would run the football, run the football, maybe a screen at best. Burkich is one of the most accurate kickers in the country. You've got a great kicking game. You just don't want it to be somewhere where it's 42, 44, or 45 yards. Pledger. Remember, Gabe Burkich, the kicker for Oklahoma, missed the first field goal of his career last week at Iowa State, a 54-yarder on the final play of the first half. But he came back and kicked a career-long 51-yarder in the second half. He's a preseason All-America and first-team All-Big 12er. 17 for 17 and 51 for 51 last season. The only kicker in the nation who made all of his field goals and all of his PATs last year. Rattler throws. Finds Jeremiah Hall. He'll lead forward. Pick up a first down. Oklahoma in range now. Nice safe play call. In particular to Hall, who can get out there. I've talked about how how much of a weapon he is once he comes out of the backfield. But now, now you're looking at Gus like a 32-yard field goal. That's, that's a chip shot for Burkich. So now it's about run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. If you pop it for a touchdown, great, you win the game. If not, Burkich kicks it. He's one of the most accurate kickers in all of college football. And he probably win the game. Marcus Major in the backfield. They give it to him. And he'll pick up the first. Riley's probably even thinking to himself. I mean, I would think that he'd want to kick it right now, Joel, just to make sure nothing bad happens. Well, a fumble. You don't need to, so you can... I don't think it's that pressing. I think he might kick it on third down, just in case there's some sort of a, a snap issue. But at this point now, it's just about run game. First down. And, and ball security, Gus. Rattler just gets to the center of the field and goes down. Yeah, I mean, he'll kick it on second down. So that's what's just placing the football. Hey, Burkich, where do you want it? I want it right in the middle, coach. Great. Rattler, get down in the middle of the field, and let's kick the field goal and win Red River. So here comes Gabe Burkich. He's been almost perfect in his career. The redshirt sophomore from Charton, Ohio. Thirty-one yards away. Timeout called by Texas. That's their one and only of this overtime period. Well, there's not much you can do if you're Texas except try to get a great push, maybe on the outside, great jump, and try to get a hand up like Perrion Winfrey was able to do on the last series. Well, there it was. Winfrey saw him with a great push. Gets that left hand up there, blocks the kick. Now OU is going to have a chance to win it. Texas is overloading the right side of the OU offensive line here. That's where OU just put their best offensive linemen and most experienced offensive linemen. Adrian Ely, 59, Creed Humphrey, 56. Gay Burkich for the win, 31 yards away. as an individual, but that's the worst kick he's had in his career in college football. Pressure breaks pipes. Or makes diamonds. Sam Ellinger, Spencer Rattler, they'll go round four from South Dallas.
45-45. What a game this has been. The 2020 of Red River. An instant classic. We start the fourth overtime. Rattler. Quick throw. Incomplete. Sean Jameson knocks that out of the hands of Charleston Rambo. Boy, Jameson's been really good in coverage, hasn't he? Right at the catch point. They were trying to get that back shoulder fade to Rambo. Second down and 10 of the 25. Rattler again to throw it. Steps up in the pocket. Throws it to Ryan Jake Stokes! Touchdown, OU! Spencer Rattler put that on a dime. That's right. I'm a five-star. When I came out of Arizona, I was the best in the country. I'm going to show you now. This was beautiful. Watch as Stoops works the middle of the field and then just keeps going. And right here, he knows I'm wide open. Looks back at his quarterback. Rattler finds him. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Beautiful throw from Rattler and an equally great route from Stoops because he felt the space and he occupied that space, giving his quarterback a target. Drake Stoops, somewhere I know your dad is proud. That's right. Scored a touchdown in the Kansas State game. And now another one here to give Oklahoma a 51 to 45 lead. As Sam Ellinger and the Texas offense prepares to come back on. Can't tell which Texas player is down in the end zone. Being told by some of our camera guys that it's number 15. That's Chris Brown. Another safety. So OU will have to go for two as Brown is helped off the field. And they're just decimated at the safety spot. You know, I, I would think that Lincoln Riley knows that and understands that. Stearns is out. Brown is out. Foster left the game at one point. Jaron Thompson left the game at one point. So, so to me, Gus, that means that you try to put the safeties in conflict. He puts the ball on the left hash. I would look for them to try to run some sort of pick play where you're getting the inside receiver running out like Drake Stoops. Trying to come this way and get a pick on the inside defender. So here comes a two-point conversion. Rapper sprints out, timing throw, got it, touchdown, Weiss. Or two-point conversion, Weiss. Theo Weiss. Well, that was a beautiful throw, wasn't it? Yes, it was. They call this sprint right option. It's just a dead sprint out to the right side, and then you're going to have a couple of guys out there in the flat, and that's the only spot he can throw it. Lincoln Riley told us this week that Rattler throws the ball on the run outside of the pocket as well as any quarterback he has coached at this point in his career, and Chris Ash is beside himself. Looking at that throw, you just think a baseball. Incredible arm speed. That's just, right. It was a whip and talent, accuracy. You know, the, just a, a basically a flip of the wrist. And now, Sam I am down eight. Needs some more magic. How many rabbits does this guy have? We will see right now. From the 25, Elliger sidesteps, drops it off. Whittington, and he crawls forward. Whittington finally brought down by Pat Fields. Nice open field tackle there, but a beautiful route by Whittington. I love Whittington's game. Ellinger found him in the flat. Ellinger hands it off this time to Robinson. And Bijan Robinson, the freshman with some power running, first down. I don't know, man, this is turning out to be a 
this may turn out to be a war of attrition. Uh, you're exactly right. That game a few years ago between LSU and Texas A&M down in College Station comes to mind. That was obviously just an, an incredible game. Kellen Mond and Joe Burrow going back and forth. And here it's Rattler and Ellinger going back and forth here in Dallas. One a redshirt freshman, another a senior. First to goal at the nine. Ellinger runs it. And Ellinger gets back to the line of scrimmage. A flag on the play, though. And Isaiah Thomas is hurt. Holding. Offense number 75. Ten yards from the previous spot. It's first down. That's Junior Angelau, the left guard. Second big penalty against Junior today. It's Josh Ellison. Man. It's impossible to keep up, but this is where, this is how, I guess I should say, we got here. First, it was the blocked field goal. Perrion Winfrey gets his hand on it. OU in the catbird seat. Burkich for the win. Not so fast. Worst kick of his career. He pulls it left. Herman has some life now with Texas. And then Rattler comes onto the field. Brilliant drive. He stoops down the middle of the field. And Bob Sun scores the touchdown, and then Rattler with a beautiful little sprint right option for the two-point conversion. And Weiss converts, and now it's Sam's turn. And now, though, they're going to be behind the sticks. So, Gus, because of where that play happened and now the penalty, it'll be first and goal all the way back at the 19-yard line. Two defensive linemen coming out of the game, though, for Oklahoma, Isaiah Thomas as well as Josh Ellison. And Thomas has been so good rushing the quarterback during this game. So first down and goal, but from the 19. Sam Ellinger drops it off. Is it a completion? They don't want it. Cade Brewer. There's, he should have dropped it. It moves him back. That's going to be a loss of yardage. It looked like that ball hit the ground. That ball hit the ground. I thought it did, too, from, from our seat. Moving on the field. Yeah, that's an incomplete Center pass. Here. And that'll, that'll buy Texas a few yards there. The ball spotted right now about the 22 and a half. It'll go back to the 19. Just call us, partner. Just call up to our blue. We got you. Second second and goal, 19-yard line, left hash. Now let's go play. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you. I'm not in a rush to go anywhere. This is awesome. At, at some point... You just run out of plays, right? Like, folks, if Texas is able to score and get the two-point conversion, in the fifth overtime, we will stop going from the 25, and it'll just be basically a shootout. It'll be just two-point conversion after two-point conversion from each team. That rule change came in after, after that game play, that I mentioned. The ball hit the ground. It's an incomplete pass. Ball be returned to the previous spot at the 19-yard line. It's second down. Let's dream a little bit here, partner. Yes, sir. Could you imagine if we had our regular crowd at oh. this year's game? Oh. Don't tease me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> second down goal at the 19. You know, these, these situations, long yardage, because it's been Sam's feet that have got him out of trouble. Ellinger winds up, picked up, and that's your ball game, Trey Brown, and that'll be the story of this game for Oklahoma, the Oklahoma defense forcing turnovers like never before, 53-45, OU wins it in a thriller. Wow. 
Just an incredible game. Going on the field of an interception has been confirmed. The game is over. They've confirmed it in the booth. He caught it. Trey Brown. Another turnover forced by Oklahoma's defense. And that's what Alex Grinch, the defensive coordinator of the Sooners, preached during the offseason. And the players bought in. We need to force more turnovers. They came into this game forcing only two the whole season. Different story today here in Red River. He's trying to get the ball to Tariq Black on this over route and he just overthrows him, and it's behind him a little bit, and Trey Brown falls off of his man, Joshua Moore, and picks it off for the win. Lincoln Riley told us that the dam was about to break with this team, and while young and inexperienced, and they've made a lot of mistakes, but he said, we're really good, it's about to click, and it certainly clicked here today in a huge win for these young Sooners and just a demoralizing loss for the Longhorns after that sensational comeback to force this overtime. So Oklahoma snaps a two-game losing streak after losing at home to Kansas State then last week in Ames to Iowa State. They come into Red River licking their wounds, bench their starting quarterback, the redshirt freshman in the first half, brought him back in the second half and somehow managed to eke this one out and they'll wear that golden hat all the way back to Norman. Whew. I'm trying to process everything that we just saw and that that was as good a college football game as I can remember covering partner. My goodness. <laughs> Man. We saw it all. Oklahoma with a bye next week. Texas with a bye next week. 53 to 45, the final. Think of all the, the ebbs and flows and the answers that we've seen in, in this game. We saw OU dominate in the third quarter. We saw Texas answer to get even, force overtime. Then we saw a stalled offense find their rhythm in overtime, and Rattler comes alive and made some brilliant plays late. What a game. All right, down on the field is our Jenny Taft, and she's standing by with Lincoln Riley. Well, guys, the longest game in Red River history, and Lincoln, you've now won four of the last five against Texas, but the resiliency of your guys throughout overtime, getting it done, what is the moment yeah. for you? You know, in any year to quit, you know, this would have been the one. You know, with all this fun against this team and give Texas credit, what a battle. This has got to be one of the greatest Red River shootouts of all time. Um, unbelievable game, man. Unbelievable. Your defense and Trey Brown, finally, you've been wanting the finish from that group. How impressive were they? Yeah, the turnovers were great. You know, we, we fought. We had a couple of plays we didn't make, but, man, we made we made it when it counted and, and won it, man. It was, it was awesome. Spencer Rattler was a special in the second half yep. in overtime. What did you say to him at the break? Uh, he did nothing. I mean, he, he, we went through the adjustments. Uh, I thought Tanner came in and did a good job, and, and it settled Spencer down a little bit, and he made a lot of big-time plays there at the end. We're going to be talking about this one for a while, Coach. Congrats. Forever. Thanks. Turnover's the story. Sam Ellinger forced into two interceptions. Ingram fumbled. OU also blocked a punt, 53 to 45 the final. Lincoln Riley said it best. This one's gonna be remembered forever. 53-45 the final coming up after the break. We'll take you out to Fort Worth for K-State TCU.